They offer a full line of Bruno products that are proudly made in the USA. They also have financing available to get you mobile when you need it as soon as you need it. So if you would like to continue to be on the move in your own home, call Serialist Pros at 724-231-5154. That's 724-231-5154. In every field, there is one outstanding value to which all others are compared. In memorials, the one is Marshall's Monuments. Visit Marshall's Monuments to see their superior memorials. Their years of experience make them the company best qualified to help you select the monument most suited to your needs. That's Marshall's Monuments, in business for 151 years. Located across from the Uniontown Post Office. Casey's now offers a sit-down banquet hall at 65 Lebanon Avenue in Uniontown, and you can seat up to 50 people with kitchen facilities available. Bring your own food or let Casey's fine staff cater it for you. A perfect intimate setting for your small affair, such as showers, reunions, or after funeral dinners. For all information, phone 724-550-4126. That's 724-550-4126. 724-550-4126 for Casey Sports Cafe. It's time for another C.R. Barana Group High School Sports Day. Coverage of high school baseball here on WMBS. The Provide High School Sports Network and Facebook Live being brought to you by the C.R. Barana Group. Fayette County Recorder of Deeds, John Marietta. Uniontown Detailing. The Center's for Rehab Services and Physical Therapist, Jim Burns. State Farm Agent, Lauren Yeoman. General Dentist, Dr. Edward Wietek. First Federal Savings and Loan Association of Greene County. m &R Transit. The Radcliffe Law Firm, the Browns Insurance Group and Agent David Hughes, Potter's Bar and Grill, the WVE Medicine Uniontown Hospital, Ted Silva and Son Body and Fender Repair, Shop and Save, Walnut Hill Uniontown, the Somerset Trust Company, the Catholic War Veterans, both 1669 in Hopwood, Novacare Rehabilitation, Jimmy Johns in Uniontown, Davis and Davis Attorneys at Law, Peachin's Pharmacy, Casey's Sports Cafe, MR Transit, Ford of Uniontown, and by Mama Ruka's Pizza Shop. Now stay tuned for high school baseball action here on WMBS, the Triple Live High School Sports Network and Facebook Live. From Ross Draver Township, it's time for high school baseball action here on WMBS, the Triple Live High School Sports Network, the South Union Township Sports Network, and Facebook Live this afternoon. The Laurel Highlands Mustangs taking on the Belvern and Leopards. The Mustangs coached by Brad Yeoman in his first year, sporting a 5-2 and two overall record, 3-2 and two in Section 3, 4A play. Belvernon coached by Tony Watson in his third year, sitting a 3-6 and six overall, 2-5 and five in conference play. Brian Morozak along with you, Jerry Dupay behind the camera, and a collection of Bill Madden, Jerome Schell and Nick Barczyk back inside our WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital Studios. Our pregame show being brought to you by the Sprouse Insurance Group and insurance agent David Hughes. They'll get you ready for the game. They're located at 217 West Main Street in Uniontown. Phone 724-437-9812 for the Sprouse Insurance Group. Our game also live streaming on the South Union Township Sports Network in cooperation with Township Supervisors Bob Schiffbauer, Rick Fernan, and Jason Scott. Breezeline Cable, Armstrong Cable, and CU TV with Gary Smith. Again, Jerry Dupay behind the camera on the Laurel Highlands Mustangs and the Belvern and Leopards continuing this series, which started last night. Laurel Highlands sustained a late Belvern and rally for a 3-1 to one win. The win was the Mustangs' fifth straight and strengthened their hold for a playoff spot in the conference. The loss for Bell Vernon was their third in a row and put them farther behind the eight ball as they look to hunt down a playoff spot with only five conference games remaining for the Leopards. Looking at the current conference standings, West Mifflin at the top of the table, 7-1 in conference play, 10-2 overall. Uniontown sitting at 4-2 in the conference, 5-2 overall. Uniontown and West Mifflin will meet for a conference series next Monday and Tuesday. We'll have Monday's game for you here on WMBS. Laurel Highlands now in third place in the conference at 3-2. and two, A half game up over Elizabeth Ford who fell to West Mifflin yesterday. Warriors sitting at 3-3. Three and three. And then you have Bell Vernon and Greensburg-Salem both on the outside looking in at 2-5 and five in the conference. Ringgold sits at 1-4. and four. This afternoon on the mound for Laurel Highlands will be Braden O'Brien and he'll be countered by Bell Vernon's ace, Matt Bamford. Should be a lot of fun this afternoon. High school baseball action. Laurel Highlands taking on Bell Vernon from Ross Draver Township and will set the batting lineup for Laurel Highlands and the defense for Bell Vernon when the Sprouse Insurance Group pregame show continues right after this. Going on now, it's the other Chevrolet. Our customers can drive away in a new 2022 Chevy Equinox for only $239 a month. Security deposit waived. Stop in for more 
test drive or visit SeaHarborChevy.com. Chevrolet, find new roads. Lease is for GMS for well-qualified individuals at 10,000 miles per year. 24 months with 3,500 cash rate equity. and must have a GM lease for non-GM lease in household. Payment is for tax, settle fees, and for payment. Security deposit waived. Sale ends May 2nd, 2022. While supplies last, call dealer for all of the details at 724-929-8000. Bring forward to home construction season with First Federal of Green County. First Federal's construction and improvement loans puts you in charge of your dream home project. With all the tools you need, First Federal offers construction loans, owner-builder loans, and home improvement loans. With offices in Fayette, Green, and Washington counties, your loan stays here. Visit with a First Federal loan officer today or apply online at firstfederalofgreen.com. First Federal Savings and Loan Association of Green County. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender, and MLS number 458729. I'm attorney Rob Harper, and I'm happy to be joining Bill Martin and Trip Radcliffe at Radcliffe Law in Uniontown. I grew up in Uniontown and chose to make Fayette County my home. I also represent the county as an assistant district attorney, and I know my way around a courtroom. If you are hurt in an accident, buying or selling a home, need assistance with an estate or will preparation, call me at Radcliffe Law, 724-439-3939. The initial consultation is free. Radcliffe Law, making the law personal. General Dentist Dr. Edward L. Wietek Jr. treats children, teens, and adults of all ages. Dr. Wetech performs all phases of general dentistry, including crowns and bridges, partials, full dentures, comprehensive orthodontics, root canals, bonded white fillings, dental implants to replace missing teeth and to stabilize loose-fitting dentures, and comprehensive exams and cleanings. Dr. Wetech's office is located on the National Pike, one mile west of the mall on Route 40. Call him up at 724-439-1616 for Dr. Edward L. Wetech, Jr. The Catholic War Veterans Post 1669 in Hopwood, holding a veterans' breakfast Sunday, May 20th. 22nd from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. The breakfast includes pancakes, sausage, bacon, eggs, coffee, tea, orange juice, and milk. Veterans, fire, and police are free. Guests are welcome and asked to make a goodwill donation. The Veterans Breakfast, Sunday, May 22nd from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Catholic War Veterans Post 1669 in Hopwood. RSVP not required. UPMC Centers for Rehab Services on Wayland Smith Drive offers cutting-edge physical therapy. Jim Burns and his staff are residents of the community, treating sports injuries, neurological conditions, back pain, brains and strains, joint replacements, hand injuries, and other conditions. They treat you efficiently and safely by taking all necessary precautions while disinfecting the clinic regularly. All insurance accepted. Experienced therapists. Convenient location and hours, part of the community. Call the office with a prescription from your doctor or schedule by direct access, 724-437-7500. Back here in Ross River Township, Laurel Highlands batting first here on the top half of the first inning. Let's set their lineup leading off the shortstop, number nine, Ty Sankovich. Batting second and playing in center field, number two, junior C.J. Gesk. Batting third and playing first base, senior number 18, Alex McLean. In the cleanup spot and playing in left field, senior number 17, Carson D'Amico. Pitching and batting fifth, number 22, junior Braden O'Brien. Batting sixth, the designated hitter, hitter, senior number 11, Ben Diamond. Batting seventh and playing third base, senior number five, Braden McKnight. Batting eighth and in right field, junior number 15, Caleb Yanoski. And batting ninth and catching, junior number 10, Patrick Cavanaugh. Defensively for Bell Vernon, Adam LaCarte out in left, Brady Hoffman in center and Jake Jedico in right. Around the horn, it's Evan Morrow playing third, Aiden Oaks playing short, Zach Jackson playing second base, and Andrew Sokol playing first base. Matt Bamford on the mound and Jake Wessel catching. Looking at Bamford's numbers, very impressive so far this season, sporting a 2-1 overall record, 1.03 ERA. This will be his fourth appearance. He's worked 20 and a third innings, given up 14 hits, five runs, three of them earned, struck out 27, and walked only six so far this season. The Mustangs continue to be plagued by the stomach bug for the second straight game. Laurel Highlands without Frankie Kula in their starting lineup. Carson Scott will make his second straight start at second base. And also Devin Kravosky was the penciled-in starter for the game for Laurel Highlands today. The lefty also out with the stomach bug, so the Mustangs hoping to heal up. Again, Laurel Highlands will have an off day tomorrow before starting a two-game series with Greensburg-Salem coming up Monday and Tuesday. We'll have Tuesday's game for you here on WMBS, the South Union Township Sports Network, Facebook Live, and the Trib Live High School Sports Network. We're ready for the first pitch right after this. Bell Vernon hosting Laurel Highlands coming your way next from Ross Traver Township. Bad hair day, bad day at the office, bad day behind the wheel. Hey, 
Stuff happens, even to the best of us. At least your car insurance rate doesn't have to take a hit. Get Erie Rate Lock from Erie Insurance. Gives you a great rate that stays put until you change a car, driver, or your address. Plus, seriously good service. Now that's something to smile about. Your Erie agent in Uniontown and Ross Traver Township is Sprouls Insurance Group. 724-437-9812 or go to SprowlsInsurance.com. Erie Rate Lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage and is not available in all states. The WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital Orthopedic and Spine Institute is open and their experienced providers are ready to care for you. Orthopedic and Spine Care spans a wide range of problems, from arthritis to joint trauma caused by injury or overuse. Hips, shoulders, knees, and backs are the most common areas where patients experience pain or impaired function. At WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital, they can treat orthopedic and spine problems with state-of-the-art care. Their board-certified orthopedic surgeons and specialists are well-experienced in the latest treatments for damaged and diseased joints. They offer everything from physical therapies to joint repairs and joint replacements. Whenever possible, the newest minimally invasive techniques are used to ensure quicker recovery, less pain, and less damage to surrounding tissues. To learn more about the newly opened Orthopedic and Spine Institute at WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital or to schedule an appointment, call 724-912-7533 or visit wvumedicine.org slash uniontown. WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital, the new us, here for you. Dinner's great. It's one of your top three favorite meals. You just don't want to have to make it. Well, with Jimmy John's, you don't have to. Whether you live in a sandwich delivery zone or head into the store, you can always get a freaky fresh sandwich. Click to order at jimmyjohns.com. Freaky fast, freaky good. Order online at jimmyjohns.com or call 724-437-6800 for delivery or curbside pickup. Jimmy John's, next to Walnut Hill, shop and save. Getting set to go from Ross Traver Township. The Mustangs decked out in their away blues, red numbers, white trim with gray pants, and a red line going down the pants. The Mustang dugout off to our right. Bell Vernon in their home golds with green numbers and white pants. Their dugout off to our left. Our live video stream on WMBS, courtesy of MNR Transit and Potter's Bar and Grill today on the South Union Township Sports Network. I'd like to thank the Sprouse Insurance Group in Union Town and Agent David Hughes, United Bank, Davis and Davis Attorneys at Law, South Union Township Supervisors Robert Schiff Bauer, Rick Vernon, and Jason Scott, Southwestern Gastrointestinal Specialist, SWGI in Union Town, Dr. Calabrese, Ruth Hart, Stokes at Hoppy, and Zebley Mahalov and White Union Town Business and Bankruptcy Attorneys. It was a full day in the conference yesterday, of course, here on WMBS and the South Union Township Sports Network. We the Laurel Highlands Bell Vernon game. Mustangs down the Leopards by a score of 3 to 1. Greensburg Salem got by Ringgold on the road by a score of 2 to 1. And West Mifflin continue their stellar play, shutting out Elizabeth Forward by a score of 6 to nothing. And plenty of games around the region today, including Thomas Jefferson at Connellsville. That game scheduled to start at 2 o'clock this afternoon. Also getting underway at high noon. Brownsville at Waynesburg. Bet Center at California, another noon start. Carmichael's at Bentworth already underway. Beavers at Ringgold this afternoon in Peters Township taking on Greater Latrobe. Again, the schedule for Laurel Highlands next week. They'll have a home-and-home home with Greensburg-Salem. They'll play at Greensburg-Salem coming up on Monday and then host Greensburg-Salem on Tuesday. We don't know yet if that game will be played at Laurel Highlands High School or at Hutchinson Field in Hopwood where the Mustangs have played all of their home games so far this season. The Mustangs, two non-conference road games scheduled for the latter portion of next week. They're at Brownsville on Thursday and then at Greater Latrobe on Friday. The Greater Latrobe game was originally scheduled for Laurel Highlands but moved to the artificial surface at Latrobe next Friday, currently set for a 4 o'clock start. Here on WMBS coming up on Monday, we'll have the West Mifflin Uniontown game from Bailey Park. Those two teams, the top two teams in the conference right now, West Mifflin at 7-1, and one, Uniontown at 4-2, and two, and then we'll have game two of the series with Greensburg-Salem and Laurel Highlands coming up on Tuesday. They're about ready to start the national anthems. So we'll take our final break before the first pitch right after this from Ross Traver Township here on WMBS, the South Union Township Sports Network, the Triple Live High School Sports Network, and Facebook Live. Did you know that you have a choice for your physical therapy provider? NovaCare Rehabilitation offers same-day appointments, and oftentimes you don't need a prescription from your doctor to see us. We will make sure that you are treated as an individual and will work directly one-on-one -on -one with you to help achieve your goals. You have tried the rest. Now try the best. NovaCare, Delaware Avenue in Uniontown. Phone 724-437-0556 to schedule your appointment today. 
going on now at Sea Harbor Chevrolet. Our customers can drive away in a new 2022 Chevy Equinox for only $239 a month. Security deposit waived. Stop in for a test drive or visit SeaHarborChevy.com. Chevrolet, find new roads. Lease is for GMS or well-qualified individuals at 10,000 miles per year. 24 months of 3,500 cash rate equity and must have a GM lease for non-GM lease in household. Payment is for tax penalties and for payment. Security deposit waived. Sale ends May 2nd, 2022. While supplies last, call dealer for all of the details at 724-929-8000. I'm attorney Rob Harper, and I'm happy to be joining Bill Martin and Trip Radcliffe at Radcliffe Law in Uniontown. I grew up in Uniontown and chose to make Fayette County my home. I also represent the county as an assistant district attorney, and I know my way around a courtroom. If you are hurt in an accident, buying or selling a home, need assistance with an estate or will preparation, call me at Radcliffe Law, 724-439-3939. The initial consultation is free. Radcliffe Law, making the law personal. The Catholic War Veterans Post 1669 in Hopwood, holding a veterans breakfast Sunday, May 22nd, from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. The breakfast includes pancakes, sausage, bacon, eggs, coffee, tea, orange juice, and milk. Veterans, fire, and police are free. Guests are welcome and asked to make a goodwill donation. The Veterans Breakfast, Sunday, May 22nd, from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Catholic War Veterans Post 1669 in Hopwood. RSVP not required. Bad hair day, bad day at the office, bad day behind the wheel. Hey, stuff happens, even to the best of us. At least your car insurance rate doesn't have to take a hit. Get Erie Rate Lock from Erie Insurance. Gives you a great rate that stays put until you change a car, driver, or your address. Plus, seriously good service. Now that's something to smile about. Your Erie agent in Uniontown and Ross Traver Township is Sprouls Insurance Group. 724-437-9812 or go to SprowlsInsurance.com. Very rate block is not guaranteed continued insurance coverage and it's not available in all states. Just about set to go from Ross Traver Township, the Bell Vernon Leopards and the Laurel Highlands Mustangs. Matt Bamford finishing up his last couple of warm-up tosses. Again, it'll be Ty Sankovich, CJ Gesk, and Alex McLean due up here in the top of the first inning for the Laurel Highlands Mustangs on a warm afternoon for high school baseball. Quite a contrast to what we saw weather-wise earlier on in the week, but don't be surprised if we see temperatures in the 40s again by next Tuesday and Wednesday. That's certainly spring in western Pennsylvania. Both of these teams trying to get the bats going as well today. You look at Bell Vernon as a team just batting right around 200. In fact, the Leopards only one hit in that game yesterday against Laurel Highlands until the seventh inning when they started a little rally back and actually had the game-tying run on base in scoring position before Laurel Highlands was able to shut down the Leopards. Complete game for Joe Chambers on the mound, and Joe could actually pitch for Laurel Highlands next Tuesday on three days rest. Not sure if Laurel Highlands would risk that here in late April. I think if it was a playoff game, you might see them make that move, but the Mustangs will try to make the most of their pitching depth here over the next couple of days. Again, an off day tomorrow, but games coming up on Monday and Tuesday against Greensburg-Salem, and you look at the Golden Lions sitting at 2-5 and five in the conference. But remember, Laurel Highlands lost at Greensburg-Salem in a slugfest last year, 11-10. She certainly can't take the Golden Lions for granted either. Ty Sankovic stepping in. Ty trying to get his bat going, batting just 217 with an RBI, junior shortstop. Again, Matt Bamford, 2-1 and one overall, 1 1.03 ERA. First pitch from Bamford, and therefore a strike, 0-1. Scoreboard here at the DiVergilio Sports Complex located down the right field line. This is our first time actually broadcasting the game here from Ross Traver Township behind home plate as Bamford misses there on the 0-1 to even up the count at 1-1. One one. Usually we're up on the press box deck down the third baseline. But I have to thank the staff here at Ross Traver Township and the folks from the Bell Vernon Baseball staff are setting us up behind home plates. On top of the action for you. Bamford's 1-1 to Sankovic on the way. Fastball misses low and outside. Takes the count to 2-1. And, and Laura Highlands won five straights. Got swept in that opening doubleheader series against West Mifflin. And since then they've won five in a row, including four conference games. Snuck in a non-conference win during that stretch over Trinity at Washington and Jefferson. Bamford misses low on the 2-1. So that takes us to 3-1. Also have to thank Frank Kula helping us out today, running the score hub on the balls and strikes that you'll see on your screen on our Facebook Live feed. And Bamford on the 3-1 pitch, fastball well outside, issuing a leadoff walk here to Ty Sankovic. And the Mustangs in business here in the top half of the first inning. And you have to wonder, will we see Bell Vernon pressing a little bit here today? Certainly a desperate situation 
for the Leopards. Five conference games, including today, remaining, sitting at two and five. And right now, a game and a half out of the final playoff spot in the conference. Now, C.J. Guest showing bunt, pulls back, pitching there for a strike. Takes the count to 0-1. Guest, junior center fielder for Laurel Highlands today. Batting 385 with three RBIs. Just underway from Ross Draver Township, Laurel Highlands and Bell Vernon. Mustangs with Ty Sankovic on first after a leadoff walk from Bell Vernon. Ace Matt Bamford again. Guest showing bunt, lays it down the third base line. They're going to go to second and get the force out for one. Throw back to first, not in time. So a heads-up play from Evan Morrow coming down at third base, making the throw down to Aiden Oaks. And retiring the lead runner goes as a fielder's choice. 5-6. Retire Sankovic. Now you have Gascon first, one out. Here in the top of the first inning with Alex McLean coming to the plate. McLean, senior first baseman, batting 417 with four RBIs. Bamford's first pitch to Alex. This one ripped deep to left field, moving back to the wall and making the catch. Adam LeCart. We saw LeCart rob Carson D'Amico on an extra base hit yesterday down at Hutchinson Field in Hopwood. And here's LeCard again doing his thing out there in left field with a great catch on a well-hit ball from Alex McLean going all the way back to the warning track for the second out of this top half of the first inning. Now that'll bring up the aforementioned Carson D'Amico, senior left fielder for the Mustangs with a 455 average and seven RBIs. Bamford checking Gesk, head first slide back safely there for CJ. Now Bamford looking in to catcher Jake Wessel. Wessel had a nice game at the plate for Bell Vernon yesterday as well. Actually had the Leopards only hit until the seventh inning. And there's Bamford missing on the first pitch to Carson D'Amico. Count at 1-0. Brian Morozak along with you. Jerry Dupay behind the camera. Frank Kula helping us out with the score hub. And Nick Barczyk and Jerome Shell back inside our WVU Medicine Union Town Hospital Studios. 1-0, misses high and inside. Takes us to 2-0 to Carson D'Amico. Top of the first inning on a warm 80-degree sunny afternoon in Westmoreland County. 2-0 on the way. Breaking ball in there for a strike. Takes us to 2-1. Bell Vernon will have their conference off week next week. Leopards won't play another conference game until the first week in May. If you'd like a win to go into the conference break and not sitting at 2-6, and six, another head first slide back there from C.J. Gesk. There is still hope for Bell Vernon. You go back and look at the conference standings from last year. Elizabeth Ford was the fourth and final team to get it out of the section, and their conference record was 5-7. and seven. I think really to be safe, you want to get to that 6-6 six and six mark. 2-1 on the way. That one fouled off by Carson. And right now you look at Bell Vernon with two conference wins, pretty much meaning you need four wins in your final five conference games if you want to find yourself in the WPIL playoffs. Anything short of that, you need a lot of help along the way. Bamford again from the stretch, 2-2 here to D'Amico, another breaking ball with a runner going popped up in the deep infield and charging in from right field and making the play there, Jake Jettico for the final out of the innings. The Mustangs strand C.J. Gask right at the bottom of the first scoreless here on the CR Prada Group. High School Sports Day. Uniontown Detailing offers an all-inclusive auto care experience. Services include full auto detailing, professional ceramic coating, window tinting, undercoating, paintless dent repair, and more. Uniontown Detailing has moved to a new location on 255 South Mount Vernon Avenue in Uniontown. Stop by and check them out today. Best of luck this season to all local teams from Uniontown Detailing. Just as your local State Farm agent combines good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates, you can combine your home and auto. And guess what you'll get? That's right, good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates. In fact, State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman is your go-to agent in Uniontown for the service you deserve at the price you want. So try to combine home and auto today. State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman will help you mix and match things perfectly. Call 724-592-6308 for your surprisingly great race. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Bell Vernon coming to bat here in the bottom of the first inning. Scoreless game. The Laurel Highlands Mustangs and the Bell Vernon Leopards will take a look at the Leopards batting lineup leading off the 
Senior center fielder, number five, Brady Hoffman, batting second in left field. Sophomore, Adam LaCarte, batting third and playing first base, number 18, Andrew Sokol. In the cleanup spot and the designated hitter today, number 16, Ryan Hammer. Batting fifth and playing shortstop, number 11, Aiden Oaks. Batting sixth and playing third base, number six, Evan Morrow. Catching and batting seventh, number 19, Jake Wessel. In right field, batting eighth, number four, Jake Jettico. And batting ninth and playing second base, number 20, Zach Jackson. Defensively for Laurel Highlands, Carson D'Amico in left, C.J. Geskin in center, Caleb Yanoski in right. Around the horn, Braden McKnight at third, Ty Sankovic at short, Carson Scott making his second straight start at second base in place of Frank Kula. Alex McLean playing first, Braden O'Brien pitching, and Patrick Cavanaugh catching. And the first pitch from O'Brien into Brady Hoffman misses for ball one. Hoffman entering with a 323 average and Six RBI, senior center fielder for the Leopards. 1-0 from O'Brien, high and outside. Takes us to 2-0. Fourth appearance of the season for Braden. Enters with a 1-1 one one record, 5.25 ERA. Has worked nine and a third innings, given up 15 hits, eight runs, seven of them earned, struck out five and walked three so far this season. Finds the strike zone, does Braden on the 2-0. Takes us to 2-1. And, and the Leopards yesterday, just one hit through six innings. So they finally got the bats going in the top of the seventh, and they'll get a ground ball here from Hoffman, snagged by O'Brien. Sends it off to Alex McLean at first. Retire Hoffman 1-3 for the first down of this bottom of the first inning. And that'll bring up sophomore left fielder Adam Lacard, who's done a nice job defensively for the Leopards over the last couple of games. Saw a robbery of Carson D'Amico yesterday, and a nice grab on a hard fly ball from Alex McLean back in the top of the first inning today. O'Brien's first pitch here to LaCarte. Finds the strike zone on the outside corner, 0-1-1. LaCarte, like many of the Leopards, trying to get the bat going a little bit. Just a 118 average for the sophomore. Now O'Brien focused for the 0-1. Breaking ball swing and a miss from Adam LaCarte. Had Adam off-balanced a little bit there. Takes us to 0-2. Again, Devin Kravoski was the penciled-in starting pitcher for the Mustangs this afternoon. But like Frank Kula... Devin, a little bit of the stomach bug, unable to go, and another breaking ball from O'Brien. Swing and a miss, strike three from LaCarte, and two up, two down for the Leopards here in the bottom of the first inning. And that'll bring up the senior first baseman, Andrew Sokol, entering with a 296 average and five RBIs for the Leopards. He's a lefty against the righty, Braden O'Brien. Sokol steps in. O'Brien focused. The first pitch to Andrew, fastball high and outside for ball one. For yesterday's game against Laurel Highlands, the last time the Leps played was here this past Saturday when they fell 10-9 against Connells. A little nubber to second base. Carson Scott makes the play for the third out of the inning. So the Leps retired 1-2-3 here in the bottom of the first. We'll go to the top of the second. Scoreless, Laurel Highlands at Bell Vernon here on the CR Product Group High School Sports Day. General Dentist Dr. Edward L. Wetech Jr. treats children, teens, and adults of all ages. Dr. Wetech performs all phases of general dentistry, including crowns and bridges, partials, full dentures, comprehensive orthodontics, root canals, bonded white fillings, dental implants to replace missing teeth and to stabilize loose-fitting dentures, and comprehensive exams and cleanings. Dr. Wetech's office is located on the National Pike, one mile west of the mall on Route 40. Call him up at 724-439-1616 for Dr. Edward L. Wetech, Jr. Attorneys from all over the state and nation advertise in southwestern Pennsylvania for personal injury and workers' comp cases, but most of them send their assistants to do the legwork. You might not even meet your attorney until your first hearing. We're local attorneys, Davis and Davis. We meet directly with our clients, including free consultation. There are no fees until you receive money on your case. If you've been injured, call Davis and Davis, representing you and your neighbors yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Call 724-437-2799. UPMC Centers for Rehab Services on Wayland Smith Drive offers cutting-edge physical therapy. Jim Burns and his staff are residents of the community, treating sports injuries, neurological conditions, back pain, brains and strains, joint replacements, hand injuries, and other conditions. They treat you efficiently and safely by taking all necessary precautions while disinfecting the clinic regularly. All insurance accepted. Experienced therapists. Convenient location and hours. Part of the community. Call the office with a prescription from your doctor or schedule by direct access 724-437-7500. 
Moving out to the top of the second inning, scoreless Laurel Highlands and Bell Vernon from Ross Draver Township. Braden O'Brien, Ben Diamond, and Braden McKnight do up for the Mustangs here in the top of the second inning. And O'Brien will lead things off. Junior getting the start on the mound for Laurel Highlands today with a 316 average and two RBIs. Hitters 5, 6, and 7 for Laurel Highlands here in the top of the second. Matt Bamford just issued one walk in that top of the first inning. First pitch swinging from O'Brien. Ground ball right back to Bamford. Throw over to first in time to Andrew Sokol to retire O'Brien 1-3 for a one-pitch out. To start this top of the second inning. And now Ben Diamond, the senior DH for the Mustangs, comes to the plate. Diamond batting 167 with two RBIs for Laurel Highlands. Righty versus righty matchup here. Bamford's first pitch now to Diamond. Fastball misses low. Count at 1-0. And the Mustangs 3-1 winners over the Leopards yesterday. Next pitch from Diamond fouled off. Evens up the count at 1-1. One one. Mustangs have had quite a bit of playoff success the last two springs. They've had high school baseball. Of course, no high school baseball during the spring of 2020, but the Mustangs over the last two springs where they played have played nine WPI, LNPI, AA playoff play-in games, or playoff games, excuse me. As Diamond fouls off that pitch, takes us to one and two. Mustangs last year picking up WPI, L playoff wins over Beaver and North Catholic before losing to Montour in the semifinals. They lost to PI, AA play-in game to Blackhawk. 3-2 at W&J. Got now a 2-2. Two two. Bamford to Diamond in a scoreless game. One out here in the top of the second inning. Next pitch inside takes us 4-3-2. Of course, you go back to that 2019 season. Laurel Highlands playing in a WPIL championship game. Losing to Shaler after they picked up WPIL playoff wins over Kiskey, Hampton, and Franklin Regional. 3-2 pitch hits Ben Diamond. And that gives the Mustangs a base runner. Diamond could have got out of the way as well. Would have been ball four. Nonetheless, a one-out base runner for Laurel Highlands here in the top of the second inning with Braden McKnight coming to the plate. McKnight batting 214. Senior playing third base today with three RBIs. Mustangs plated two runs yesterday in the bottom of the first inning. And then went into the sixth until they scored again. And you had McKnight showing bunt. And I'm going to rule, I guess, the pitchers just fouled off. Just take us to 0-1. Had a little excitement there. I'm not sure if McKnight thought he might have been hit, but the ball must have clipped his bat. Now we'll get back inside the batter's box. With Ben Diamond on first, an 0-1 count with one out here in the top of the second inning. And now Bamford to check the runner. Close play over at first and picked off is Ben Diamond. Wow. Had a couple of bang-bang plays yesterday. And there's another one there as Diamond picked off for the second out of the inning. Coach Sankovic over at first did not like the call. And Coach Sankovic warned over there for questioning that. Count still 0-1 to McKnight. Now the base is empty. That pitch of fastball misses high and outside. Evens things up now at 1-1. So Braden will have to swing away in this situation for Laurel Highlands. Now the 1-1 on the way. Swing and a miss. Big time cut there from Braden McKnight as Bamford brought the heat. Now Matt ready with a 1-2 here to Braden McKnight, a wind and fire, and he's kind of lost the handle of that one, maybe a little sweat getting to that baseball. Missed well outside, even after the count now at 2-2. Two and two. Bamford long look into Jake Wessel again, 2-2 two, two pitch on the way, another fastball nub foul there for McKnight staying alive. Count remains at 2-2. Two and two. Mentioned the playoff success Laurel Highlands has had, Bell Vernon. They've gone seven straight years without a WPIL playoff win. In fact, 
the last seven springs where the Leopards have played a WPIL playoff game. They missed the postseason in 2014 and, of course, didn't play ball in 2020. They're 0-7 in the first round of the WPIL playoffs, but Bamford ends the stop of the second inning by striking out Braden McKnight, his first strikeout of the afternoon, and the Mustangs end up going down in order. You had Diamond that was hit by a pitch but picked off, and we'll head to the bottom of the second inning, still scoreless, Bell Vernon and Laurel Highlands here on the CR Prada Group. High School Sports Day. On the go, no time to stop. That's when you'll love Peach and Pharmacy's curbside pickup at Peach and Market in downtown Connellsville. Next time you have a prescription to get, let Peach and Pharmacy make it easy for you. Call ahead at 724-626-9600 or send a message. Let friendly curbside pickup keep you right where you want to be, in the driver's seat. Peach and Pharmacy. Your local pharmacy. Are you looking for a rewarding career? M&R Transit is now hiring van drivers. Van drivers must be 26 years of age, have a valid driver license, and a clean driving record. Van drivers must be able to obtain all clearances. For more information, call 724-439-3164. That's 724-439-3164 or apply in person at m and Transit, 253 South Mount Vernon Avenue. m and Transit wishes the Laurel Highlands Mustangs good Good luck. Uniontown Detailing offers an all-inclusive auto care experience. Services include full auto detailing, professional ceramic coating, window tinting, undercoating, paintless dent repair, and more. Uniontown Detailing has moved to a new location on 255 South Mount Vernon Avenue in Uniontown. Stop by and check them out today. Best of luck this season to all local teams from Uniontown Detailing. Wasting no time here in the bottom of the second inning. Hammer first pitch swing, and that's Ryan Hammer for Bell Vernon. A ground ball to first. It was taken there by the Mustangs' Alex McLean over to Braden O'Brien, who was covering the bag. So Hammer retired 3-1 for the first out of the inning, and now Aiden Oaks coming to the plate. Senior shortstop for Bell Vernon came into this game with a 276 average and six RBIs. Takes strike one against Braden. Now the 0-1 on the way. Fastball just missed outside, even up the count at one and one. Still looking for our first hit of the afternoon on each side. Mustangs a couple of base runners. Ty Sankovic walked to start the game, and then Ben Diamond hit by a pitch. The Mustangs ended up having Sankovic retired at second on a fielder's choice from C.J. Gask, who was left stranded after one. Then Ben Diamond was picked off in that second inning. Bell Vernon looking for their first base runner of the afternoon. Look at a ground ball here to third. McKnight, nice snare over to first to Alex McLean to retire Aiden Oaks 5-3 for the second out of the inning. So five straight Leopards have been retired as we work here in the bottom of the second inning. Game still scoreless with Evan Morrow coming to the plate. Senior third baseman for Bell Vernon entering this game with a 2-11 average and three RBIs. Righty versus righty matchup here. First pitch from Braden and first pitch swinging. Fouling it off there is Morrow on the right side. Takes the count to 0-1. So both Braden O'Brien and Matt Bamford have been very efficient so far this afternoon. Next pitch on the way and therefore a strike from O'Brien. And just like that, the count 0-2 to Evan Morrow. The Mustangs hope they can get Devin Kravoski back for Monday's game against Greensburg-Salem. He would be next in turn in the Mustang rotation. Again, he was the penciled-in starter today out with a stomach bug. As was Frank Kula. Carson Scott has done an admirable job filling in at second base over the last two games. Ground ball here to short. Sankovic with the glove. Throw over to first in time to Alex McLean to retire Evan Morrow. So once again, the Leopards retired in order here in the bottom of the second inning. We're scoreless after two. Bell Vernon and Laurel Highlands here on the CR Product Group High School Sports Day. Bad County Recorder of Deeds, John Marietta, would like to wish the Laurel Highlands Mustangs, the Uniontown Red Raiders, and all of our local high school baseball teams the best of luck this season and invite you to listen to his show every Tuesday at 3.15 here on WMBS. Good times and good food. It's all at Potter's Bar and Grill on Morgantown Street in Uniontown, family-owned and operated. Potter's has been a staple in the Uniontown community since 1950. So get out of the house and make your next night out at Potter's Bar and Grill on Morgantown Street in Uniontown. 
Call them up at 724-438-9835. That's 724-438-9835. Or visit Potters on Facebook. We'll see you at Potters. Going on now, we got the Chevrolet. Our customers can drive away in a new 2022 Chevy Equinox for only $239 a month. Security deposit waived. Stop in for a test drive or visit SeaHarborChevy.com. Chevrolet, find new roads. Lease is for GMS for well-qualified individuals at $10,000 per year. 24 months with 3500 cash rate equity and must have a GM lease for non-GM lease in household. Payment is for tax, penalties, and for payment. Security deposit waived. Sale ends May 2nd, 2022. Walk slide last. Call dealer for all of the details at 724-929-8000. Did you know that you have a choice for your physical therapy provider? NovaCare Rehabilitation offers same-day appointments, and oftentimes you don't need a prescription from your doctor to see us. We will make sure that you are treated as an individual and will work directly one-on-one -on -one with you to help achieve your goals. You have tried the rest. Now try the best. NovaCare, Delaware Avenue in Uniontown. Phone 724-437-0556 to schedule your appointment today. Moving down to the top of the third inning, Caleb Yanoski, Patrick Cavanaugh, and Ty Sankovich do up for Laurel Highlands. Hitters 8, 9, and 1. Still looking for our first hit of the afternoon. Laurel Highlands and Belvern and scoreless. Mustangs, as we said, a couple of base runners. Ty Sankovich on to the first with a walk. Ben Diamond hit by a pitch in the second. And neither one could get around. In fact, Diamond picked off. Sankovich retired on a fielder's choice, and C.J. Guest left stranded in that first inning. Caleb Yanoski, junior right fielder this afternoon, batting 231. Looking for his first RBI of the season. Facing Matt Bamford, who's been impressive and finds the strike zone on the first pitch to Caleb Yanoski. Counted 0 and 1. And you look at Bamford's strikeout to walks ratio coming in 27 strikeouts to 6 walks so far this season. He's been mowing them down. And a two and one overall record. One one pitch now on the way to Caleb. Missing there. Now Bamford will take a step off the mound to regroup. Yanoski was not in the starting lineup for Laurel Highlands yesterday. That one getting away from the catcher Wessel on a breaking ball from Bamford. No damage done as it bounced away and takes the count to three and one. Now Yanoski back in. 3-1 pitch from Bamford. Comes back with a fastball. Catches the outside corner for a strike. And now we're full of 3-2. And Yanoski set to go again. Payoff pitch to Yanoski. And this one popped up and in foul territory again. Bamford had a little hitch in his delivery on that last pitch to Yanoski. Kind of hesitated on the follow through before releasing. First time we've seen that from him today. We'll do this three and two again with nobody out here in the top of the third. Finally getting a little breeze blowing in. It's been actually warm this afternoon in Ross Draver Township. Three, two pitch misses low and outside for ball four. So for a third straight inning, Laurel Highlands with a base runner without a hit. And we'll see if they can get Caleb Yanoski around. Now Patrick Cavanaugh coming to the plate. Patrick batting 429 with three RBIs, junior catcher for Laurel Highlands. Patrick with a walk yesterday in the fifth inning for the Mustangs. Showing bunts. Pulled back. Pitch missed inside for ball one. Of course, after Kavanaugh, you'll have the top of the order and Ty Senkovich again for Laurel Highlands. Now Bamford's 1-0 to Kavanaugh. And actually, it's going to be a check of the runner and a head first slide back safely there. It was close. Remember, you had Diamond picked off back in the second inning. Kavanaugh again showing bunts. Pulls back. Pitch misses high and inside. Now Patrick showing a good eye so far at the plate for Laurel Highlands. Bamford again from the stretch. Patrick again shows bunts. That one I think went off the catcher's gear. Might have caught a, caught a piece of him. They're going to rule that a foul ball. As the runner, Yanoski sent back. 
So Patrick did get a piece of it. There's the count now to two and one. Patrick will step back in. Again, Bamford glancing at Caleb Yanoski. Patrick showing bunt. This one has popped up in foul territory on the right side and hits the Mustang dugout roof. Now Patrick will have to swing away here with a count of two and two. Has done a nice job putting the ball in play so far this season. Had a couple of big hits for the Mustangs this year. Already three RBIs. Batting from the ninth position in the Mustang lineup here today. Kavanaugh calls time. Size so dead. Michael out of the game yesterday. Now another check of the runner. Back to the bag safely. Yanoski Bamford, a pretty good pickoff move over to first base. Now Matt set to go again. 2-2 two, two on the way. Fastball swing and a miss. Strike three. So that's the second strikeout of the afternoon for Matt Bamford. And his 29th strikeout of the season. That'll bring up the top of the order in Ty Sankovic. Sankovic walked to lead off the game back in the first inning. Came in, though, just a 217 average and one RBI. Very uncharacteristic of Ty's game. He's going to show bunt pull back. Pitch misses high for ball one. Ty yesterday 0 for 3 with a sacrifice. And Bamford with a 1-0 count now to Ty. This bunt popped up. Look out here. Went over the fence behind us. Count now even at 1-1. One Nice complex here in Ross Draver Township, the DiVergilio Sports Complex. Leopards have played their home games here for a number of years. Can have to thank the Leopards staff, very hospitable this afternoon, helping us out. 1-1, one, one, pitch misses outside, takes the count out at 2-1. And, Game still scoreless without a hit on either side as we work here in the top of the third. And now Sankovic trying to end that. Setting a fly ball in the center field, moving over, making the catch Brady Hoffman for the second out of the inning. I'm going to bring up C.J. Gesk. C.J. grounded into a fielder's choice first time up. Enter the game with a 385 average and three RBIs, junior center fielder. C.J. yesterday, one for three, had a single to left field and scored a run back in the first inning against the Leopards. Another righty versus righty matchup. Bamford's first pitch to C.J., breaking ball, and therefore a strike 0-1, and, and you have to wonder, would Laurel Highlands try to get a little aggressive here with Caleb Yanowski, maybe try to move him in a scoring position with two outs here in the inning. You do have a good arm, though, from the catcher, Jake Wessel. Another breaking ball, missing inside. Takes the count now to 1-1. One and one. I wouldn't think it would hurt, though, to be aggressive in this situation. Runs might be hard to come by this afternoon, especially the way Matt Bamford throws for the Leopards. 1-1 on the way. Fastball, hard grounder to first. Booted there by Sokol. He's going to look to regain and unable to get back to it in time. You had Bamford come over to try to cover the bag, and that should have been a routine out. Sokol unable to make the play at first base. Has to go as an E3. And the Mustangs now with runners on first and second with Alex McLean coming to the plate. McLean popped up to the pitcher Bamford back in the first inning. Yesterday, McLean one for two with a walk and a run score. Now two on, and McLean going around there on the first pitch from Bamford. That was a breaking ball. That was likely outside the strike zone. Counted 0-1. Now Bamford's 0-1 to McLean, comes back with a fastball, catches the inside corner for a strike, 0-2 now Alex must protect the plate. Had another ball on the field from one of the other games going on here. You have a Little League game going off to our left. Busy afternoon at the DiVergilio Sports Complex. 
Now the 0-2, two on, two out, scoreless game. Laurel Highlands trying to make a little hay here on the top of the third. 0-2 from Bamford to McLean, strike three looking. Third strikeout of the afternoon for Matt Bamford, his 30th strikeout of the season, and the Mustangs leave two stranded here in the top of the third. But at the bottom of the third, still scoreless, Laurel Highlands and Bell Vernon here in the CR Prada Group High School Sports Day. Uniontown and trade me in. John Clinton from 40 Uniontown. Now I've heard that April showers bring May flowers, but how about new vehicles? Well, I guess that's just wishful thinking. So don't get left out in the storm. Stop, click, or call our friendly staff and let us explain our reservation program. First, we go over, in detail, vehicles that we have inbound. Then we go over all the incentives and pricing. If you have a trade, we do an on-the-spot trade appraisal. We make a deal, and when your vehicle arrives, you pick it up. It's easy like Sunday morning. If you have a bit more time, we're happy to place a factory order just for you. And I know you've all heard about historic used vehicle values, so don't miss out. And speaking of used vehicles, we have more than 80 on the lot, and most are certified with factory warranty. That's President Award winning 40 Uniontown. Top of the hill across the Maplebees or 40uniontown.com. Spring forward to home construction season with First Federal of Greene County. First Federal's construction and improvement loans puts you in charge of your dream home project with all the tools you need. First Federal offers construction loans, owner-builder loans, and home improvement loans. With offices in Fayette, Greene, and Washington counties, your loan stays here. Visit with a First Federal loan officer today or apply online at firstfederalofgreene.com. First Federal Savings and Loan Association of Greene County. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender, NMLS number 458729. Jake Wessel, first pitch swinging, pops it up to the shortstop Ty Sankovic. And Sankovic makes the grab to retire Wessel for the first out of the inning. Wessel yesterday was two for three, actually came into this game with a 385 average and five RBIs. Now they'll bring up Jake Jetico. First pitch, O'Brien to Jetico, nub foul. Counted 0-1. Jetico, sophomore right fielder. Batting just 062 on the season, but does have five RBIs. Another breaking ball from Braden O'Brien. Missed the strike zone there. Count even at one and one. Now O'Brien's one one. Fastball high and outside takes us to two and one. Braden will wind and fire the 2-1 pitch. Fastball off the inside of the back. Grounder to Scott at second. Makes the throw in time over to first. Retired Jetico 4-3. Alex McLean playing first base today with Braden O'Brien on the mound. O'Brien usually playing first when he's not pitching for the Mustangs. So two up, two down here in the bottom of the third inning. And that'll bring up the second baseman, Zach Jackson, the senior, batting 100 with four RBIs. Mel Vernon has been retired in order so far in this game. First pitch to Jackson, first pitch swinging, and it sent down the first baseline in a foul territory, able to track it down there. Caleb Janoski, ball actually went off the fence. So it takes the count, 2-0-1. Again, next week, high school baseball here on WMBS Monday, Uniontown hosting West Mifflin. Tuesday, we'll have the Greensburg-Salem at Laurel Highlands game for you, and then more high school baseball hopefully on Friday as well. Again, all of that weather permitting. Beginning of the week, not exactly looking stellar in the weather department, but no surprises there with the spring that we've endured so far. Oh, one pitch right down the pipe from Braden O'Brien takes us to 0-2. And, and all the games scheduled to start at 4 o'clock as of now next week. We'll keep you posted on our WMBS Facebook page and on the air if anything changes. 0-2 just outside, 1-2 and two now. O'Brien to Zach Jackson. Of course, the Laurel Highlands-Greensburg-Salem game on all of our Facebook Live platforms, including the South Union Township Sports Network, the Laurel Highlands School District page, and WMBS Facebook page, along with the Triple Live High School Sports Network. And there's a frozen strike three from Braden O'Brien sending down Zach Jackson. So the Leps retired in order again. Second strike out of the game for Braden O'Brien is... Seventh strikeout of the year, and we'll go to the top of the fourth. Still scoreless, Laurel Highlands and Bell Vernon here on the CR Prada Group High School Sports Day. 
Mom Maruka's Pizza Shop, located at 64 Barton Mill Road in Uniontown, is your prime place to enjoy local high school sports. Mom Maruka's is family-owned and operated where pride of ownership certainly shows. The Samson family carries on the tradition of homemade pizza, salads, subs, and wings. Mom Maruka's is open Monday through Saturday, 4 to 10, for indoor outdoor dining and takeout. Call 724-438-9066 or visit mommarukapizza.com for their menu. Going on now is the other Chevrolet. Our customers can drive away in a new 2022 Chevy Equinox for only $239 a month. Security deposit waived. Stop in for a test drive or visit SeaHarborChevy.com. Chevrolet, find new roads. Lease is the GMF for well-qualified individuals at $10,000 per year. 24 months of 3500 cash rate equity and must have a GM lease or non-GM lease in household. Payment is for tax, title fees, and for payment. Security deposit waived. Sale ends May 2nd, 2022. While supplies last, call dealer for all of the details at 724-929-8000. Did you know that you have a choice for your physical therapy provider? NovaCare Rehabilitation offers same-day appointments, and oftentimes you don't need a prescription from your doctor to see us. We will make sure that you are treated as an individual and will work directly one-on-one -on -one with you to help achieve your goals. You have tried the rest. Now try the best. NovaCare, Delaware Avenue in Uniontown. Phone 724-437-0556 to schedule your appointment today. Carson D'Amico, Braden O'Brien, and Ben Diamond do up for Laurel Highlands here in the top of the fourth innings. We've gone through three innings now without a hit on either side in this game. The Mustangs have had four base runners. You had Ty Sankovic walk to lead off the game. Ben Diamond hit by a pitch in the second inning. Caleb Janoski walked to lead off the third, and C.J. Guest got on via an air, but the Mustangs haven't been able to drive around any of those runners. Bell Vernon still without a base runner in this game so far as D'Amico will lead off the inning by looking at strike one from Matt Bamford. D'Amico flew out to right field, and Jake Jettico first time up. 0-1 oh, now to Carson, and there for strike two. Just like that, 0-2, oh, Matt Bamford to Carson D'Amico. Carson came in with a 455 average and seven RBIs yesterday. Carson was one for two with a walk, a double, and a run scored. And he'll swing at this pitch off the inside of the bat. High fly ball in the left. Getting under it, Adam LaCarte will make the catch for the first out of the inning. That'll bring up Braden O'Brien. Junior pitcher for the Mustangs. Grounded out 1-3, first time up. Bamford's first pitch to Braden O'Brien. Fastball high and outside. 1-0. O'Brien yesterday, a sack fly RBI. It was actually scored as a sack fly RBI caught by the second baseman. But Jackson was in a, kind of in an odd position and had to turn around to make the throw home, allowing O'Brien to drive in a run for Laurel Highlands. Braden also had a single in the sixth inning yesterday. Been productive at the plates. All season long, entering this game with a 316 average and two RBIs. Count now at 2-1. and one. In top of the fourth inning, scoreless game without a hit on either side. 2-1 on the way off the inside of the bat again. Played there by Aiden Oaks, the shortstop. High throw over to first. That goes over the head of first baseman Andrew Sokol. And you have to score that E6. So the Mustangs, another base runner via an air from the Bell Vernon Leopards. Second air committed by Bell Vernon in this game. Now you're going to have Joe Chambers on as a courtesy runner here for the pitcher O'Brien. And Ben Diamond at the plate. Ben was hit by a pitch and then picked off back in the second inning. The Mustangs can hope to try to wear down Bamford a little bit in this game. Get more opportunities at the plate. Now Matt back in the stretch. And he has a killer pickoff move. And will test Joe Chambers over at first. And Joe head first slide back safely there. Another ball coming from the Little League field onto our field. I'm sure the Leopards get used to that, playing all their home games here. Probably a regular occurrence just due to the proximity of the other fields here at the DiVergilio Sports Complex. 
Now Diamond stepping in, showing bunt. He'll pull back, pitching there for a strike, 0-1. This game moving right along so far. Been a pitcher's duel between Bamford and O'Brien. Now another throw over to first. Joe Chambers back safely. Now Diamond looking down the third base line. A sign there from head coach Brad Yeoman, who's coaching third for the Mustangs. Oh, one on the way, and that one went off the head of Ben Diamond. And Ben's all right. So the Mustangs, for the second straight inning, will have runners on first and second. Go back to the last inning. Of course, you had Yanoski walk, and then Guess got on via an air. And here, O'Brien gets on via an air, and Ben Diamond hit for the second straight time in this game. And now Braden McKnight will come to the plate. Bamford again from the stretch. McKnight showing bunt, sends it foul. I don't think the Mustangs have put a bunt in fair territory yet in this game. Maybe one. You had the fielder's choice, I think, from Gesk, where he laid it down back in the first inning, but they retired Sankovic at second. And that's been it as far as a fair ball bunt so far. McKnight's going to show bunt, then pull back and swing away and send it in a left field. Catch made there by Adam LeCart. Nowhere for the runners to go. That's the second out of the inning. So McKnight trying to fool the laps a little bit. But Adam LeCart on his game again out there in left field. And now Caleb Yanoski walked first time up. Fifth Mustang to bat here in this top of the fourth inning. Looking for his first RBI of the season. Table set here, two on, two outs. First pitch from Banford to Yanoski. A little nubber here to third. And making the play, five unassisted, stepping on the bag. Evan Morrow over at third base. So once again, Laurel Highland strands two. Still without a hit. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth. Scoreless, Laurel Highlands and Belverna here on the CR Product Group High School Sports Day. Just as your local State Farm agent combines good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates, you can combine your home and auto. And guess what you'll get? That's right, good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates. In fact, State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman is your go-to agent in Uniontown for the service you deserve at the price you want. So try to combine home and auto today. State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman will help you mix and match things perfectly. Call 724-592-6308 for your surprisingly great rate. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. On the go? No time to stop? That's when you'll love Peach and Pharmacy's curbside pickup at Peach and Market in downtown Connellsville. Next time you have a prescription to get, let Peach and Pharmacy make it easy for you. Call ahead at 724-626-9600 or send a message. Let friendly curbside pickup keep you right where you want to be, in the driver's seat. Agent Pharmacy, your local pharmacy. Looking for the highest quality products at the lowest prices? Shop and save on Walnut Hill in Uniontown is the widest selection of brands and the freshest offerings around. They specialize in your family's grocery needs. Save big and sign up for the Shop and Save Perks card to get money-saving benefits and discounts on gas. Shop and Save. Walnut Hill Road, Uniontown, open 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day. Working hard to offer you the best at Shop and Save because it's the just right thing to do. Brady Hoffman, Adam LeCar, and Andrew Sokol do up for Bell Vernon here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Hoffman's already taken strike one from Braden O'Brien. Now the 0-1 pitch, breaking ball in there for strike two again without a hit. On either side in this game so far, Leopards without a base runner. They've been retired in order in every inning. Now Brady Hoffman behind 0-2 in the 0-2 pitch from Brady and O'Brien. Another breaking ball, send foul on the right side. And a nice crowd here at the DiVergilio Sports Complex. Not only watching this game, but watching the Little League action as well off to our left. You have plenty of room for the fans here. Hillside off to the right, bleachers right behind us, and plenty of areas to watch down the left side as well. 0-2 pitch misses low and outside. Count now moves to 1-2. Hoffman grounded out 1-3 first time up 
for Bell Vernon. And going back to yesterday, Hoffman was 0 for 3. Next pitch from O'Brien just misses a little high. Evens up the count at 2 and 2. But again, Hoffman a solid average from that leadoff position. Came in batting 323 with six RBIs. Now the 2-2 from O'Brien. This is there again. Fastball low and outside. Takes us full to three and two as Bell Vernon searches for their first base runner of the afternoon. O'Brien's 3-2 on the way to Hoffman. Swing and a miss. Hopped away there from the catcher Patrick Cavanaugh. Throw over to first in time to Alex McLean. So it goes as a strikeout in the books. 2-3 on the throw. To retire Hoffman. And one out here in the bottom of the fourth inning with Adam LeCarte coming to the plate. Again, here on the South Union Township Sports Network, game brought to you by the Sprouse Insurance Group in Union Town and Agent David Hughes, United Bank, Davis and Davis Attorneys at Law, South Union Township Supervisors Robert Schiff Bauer, Rick Vernon, and Jason Scott, Southwestern Gastrointestinal Specialists, SWGI in Union Town, and Zebley Mahalov and White, Union Town Business and Bankruptcy Attorneys. First pitch misses for ball one to Adam LeCarte. And Laurel Highlands and Belvern and scoreless so far. Donuts all over the board. 1-0 now to LaCarte. And a well-hit ball. And that could be the game's first hit. In fact, it will be bouncing in front of C.J. Gesk out in center field. So a single to center for Adam LaCarte, who struck out swinging first time up. We said just a matter of time before LaCarte gets the bat going. Enter the game with just a 118 average. But he gives Bell Vernon a base runner with one out here in the bottom of the fourth inning with Andrew Sokol coming to the plate. Sokol popped up to Carson Scott first time up. Batting from the left side against the righty O'Brien, who now has to look at his first base runner and Adam LaCarte so far this afternoon, and he'll throw it over in Adam's direction. The head first slide back safely there for the sophomore left fielder for Bell Vernon. Now Brian again, fastball, this is a little low. Two and oh. Andrew Sokol. And Sokol getting a piece of this one, sending it high into center field. CJ Guest backing up and making the catch for the second out of the inning. And no room for Adam LeCart to try to advance. Ryan Hamer now coming to the plate. Hamer grounded out and actually went 3-1. Play made by Alex McClain, who flipped it off to the pitcher, Braden O'Brien, to retire Hamer to start the bottom of the second inning. First pitch here to Ryan, swing and a miss, strike one. Laurel Highland so far in this game. Mustangs have had six base runners without a hit. Haven't got a runner past second base. Throw over to first, head for a slide back safely there again from LeCart. It's waiting for our first breakthrough of the afternoon. O'Brien's next pitch, a little chin music there for Hamer. Evens up the count at one and one. O'Brien focused again from the stretch throw over to first close play. Back safely again, Adam LeCarte. He had a left-centered play. Three and six overall, two and five in the conference. Mustangs riding a five-game winning streak. Five and two overall. Three and two in the conference. Trying to get to four and two today. Got now two and one. Mustangs two non-conference wins over Trinity and Connellsville. Another check of LaCarte back safely. And two outs as we work in a scoreless game. Bottom of the fourth inning. Adam LaCarte at first is Bell Vernon's first base runner of the day. Watch for LaCarte to run here. He's going. Pitch misses a breaking ball. Throw down to second. Little one hopper. Caught there by Carson Scott, but not in time. So a stolen base for Adam LeCarte. And the Leopards are runner in scoring position here with two outs. I believe a 3-1 count now on Ryan Hamer. Now the 3-1 pitch on the way, and Hamer popping this one up. 
deep in the infield. Charging C.J. Gaskin, able to catch up with it. Fell right between C.J. and Carson Scott. Holding it third is Adam LaCarte. I think you have to score that a hit for Bell Vernon and Ryan Hamer. And surprisingly, LaCarte, who started at second base, unable to score on the play. Remember, you had two outs in the inning. You would have thought LaCarte would have been running right away and should have been able to score on the play, but he was not. He kind of hesitated for whatever reason. And now the Leopards could have had the game's first run, just to have runners on first and third with two outs, and Aiden Oaks coming to the plate. Remember that in this scoreless game. Oaks grounded out 5-3, first time up. Swings the first pitch and pops it foul on the left side. And the count at 0-1. Going back yesterday, Oaks won for three. Lone hit a single in the top of the seventh inning against the Mustangs. Again, has produced six RBIs so far this year. Watch for the runner from first to possibly advance Hamer. He's going to hold his position. Pitch in there for a strike. And now an 0-2 count here on Aiden Oaks. Mustangs trying to get out of a jam. Bell Vernon putting together a couple of hits here in the bottom of the fourth inning. And now Oaks will trot down to third to talk to head coach Tony Watson. Talking over a little strategy, but obviously has to protect the plate with an 0-2 count. Our live video stream here today on WMBS, courtesy of MNR Transit and Potter's Bar and Grill. Mustangs playing their second of four games over a five-day stretch. And they'll have a conference series with Greensburg-Salem scheduled for Monday and Tuesday. Del Vernon, they're off until... As far as the conference, so the first week in May, runner going, swinging and sending it into center field. There is Oaks getting under it. C.J. Gesk makes the catch to end the inning. So the Leopard Strand, too, way to the top of the fifth. Still scoreless, Bell Vernon and Laurel Highlands here on the C.R. Brodnick Group High School Sports Day. Chevrolet. Our customers can drive away in a new 2022 Chevy Equinox for only $239 a month. Security deposit waived. Stop in for a test drive or visit charborchevy.com. Chevrolet, find new roads. Lease is for GMF for well-qualified individuals at 10,000 miles per year. 24 months with 3,500 cash rate equity. and must have a GM lease or non-GM lease in household. Payment is for tax, title fees, and for payment. Security deposit waived. Sale ends May 2nd, 2022. While supplies last, call dealer for all of the details at 724-929-8000. When your car is damaged, the name to remember is Ted Silva and Son Body and Fender Repair, currently in their 59th year of providing quality, reliable service to the community. Ted Silva and Son offers complete collision service, minor to major repairs, frame and unibody repair, and glass installation. They will gladly blueprint your vehicle for repair, and they will work with your insurance company. With a paint booth that utilizes the environmentally friendly waterborne paint process, Ted Silva and Son not only cares for our community and our children, they care for our environment. Located on Atlas Road in Hopwood, it is the goal of Ted Silva and Son to alleviate the stress of an accident and assist you in any way possible. Family owned and operated for 59 years. Call 724-437-2351 for Ted Silva and Son Body and Fender Repair, LLC. Proud to sponsor local high school sports. Moving now to the top half of the fifth inning. Kavanaugh, Sankovic, and Gesk do off for Laurel Highlands. Hitters 9, 1, and 2. Mustang six base runners so far this afternoon. Again, have yet to score a run in this game or pick up a hit. Bell Vernon just picked up their first two hits of the afternoon in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Pair of singles from Adam LaCarte and Ryan Hamer. And the Mustangs closing the inning with a solid performance defensively keeping the leps off the scoreboard. And Brian Morozak alongside Jerry Dupay. Frank Kula helping us out with the score hub today. Nick Barchek and Jerome Shell back inside our WVU Medicine Union Town Hospital studio. Swing and a miss there from Kavanaugh. The first pitch from Bamford counted 0-1. Thank Frank for tracking us down some waters there in between innings as well on a hot Saturday afternoon. 0-1 misses to even up the count at 1-1. Now Bamford's 1-1 one, one on the way, and one nub foul from Patrick. Moves the count to 1-2. and two. Patrick struck out swinging back in the third inning. Came into the game with a 429 average. 
had a walk yesterday in the fifth inning against Bell Vernon and has driven in three runs on the season. 1-2, Bamford to Kavanaugh, fastball and Patrick with a rip to left field. Charging and getting, though, is Adam LaCarte for the first down of the inning. LaCarte again. He's recorded four outs in left field so far in this game. Had a number of them yesterday as well. Out top of the order, Ty Sankovic again. Ty walked back in the first inning, flew out to Brady Hoffman in center field back in the third. As the Mustangs start their third trip through the order, and Sankovic takes the first pitch for a strike from Matt Banford, 0-1. Now Banford ready again, 0-1 to Sank. Breaking ball, misses low. Evens up the count at 1-1. Bamford regroups, likes that stretch position even with the base is empty and finds the strike zone again on the 1-1 to Sankovic. Now Ty must protect the plates. 1-2, Bamford to Sankovic, breaking ball, hard chopper to second. Could be a tough play here from Jackson. Throw over to first, close play over at first, but retired is Ty Sankovic. Sokol with a foot on the bag. So it goes 4-3 on the ground out. And Sankovic now 0 for 2 in this game with a walk. And C.J. Guest will come to the plate. Guest hit into a fielder's choice first time up and got on via an air in the third inning. Two outs, bases empty, top of the fifth scoreless game. C.J. first pitch swinging, sends it down the first base line, but it goes foul. Counted 0-1. We thought hits might be tough to come by this afternoon. They always are when you're facing Matt Bamford. And Bell Vernon as well has just struggled this season to get the bats going. We mentioned coming into this two-game series, they were hitting 226 as a team. Only had one hit yesterday through six innings before picking up a couple in that seventh inning, trying to rally back. In fact, they had three straight singles in that seventh inning yesterday. The rally fell short, fell short as they lost to Laurel Highlands 3-1. Bamford misses there on the pitch to C.J. Guest to even up the count at 1-1. One and one. In two outs as we work in the top of the fifth. Bamford comes back with a fastball to C.J. who sends it in a right field on a line and caught there by Jake Jedico for the third out of the inning. So the Mustangs retired 1-2-3. In the top of the fifth, we'll head to the bottom of the fifth, still scoreless. Laurel Highlands and Bell Vernon here on the CR Prana Group High School Sports Day. Casey's now offers a sit-down banquet hall at 65 Lebanon Avenue in Uniontown and can seat up to 50 people with kitchen facilities available. Bring your own food or let Casey's fine staff cater it for you. A perfect intimate setting for your small affair, such as showers, reunions, or after funeral dinners. For all information, phone 724-550-4126. That's 724-550-4126, 724-550-4126 for Casey Sports Captain. With branches in Markleysburg, Connellsville, Hopwood, Uniontown, and Periopolis, Somerset Trust Company is truly Fayette County's community bank. We invite you to stop by and experience the Somerset Trust Company difference. Local decision making, convenient locations, extended hours, award-winning online and mobile banking, and more. Somerset Trust Company, community banking worth talking about. Branches and ATMs throughout Fayette County. On the go? No time to stop? That's when you'll love Peach and Pharmacy's curbside pickup at Peach and Market in downtown Connellsville. Next time you have a prescription to get, let Peach and Pharmacy make it easy for you. Call ahead at 724-626-626. 9600 or send a message let friendly curbside pickup keep you right where you want to be in the driver's seat pharmacy, your local pharmacy already in the bottom of the fifth scoreless laurel highlands and bell vernon and Braden o'brien's first pitch inside to evan morrow almost clip morrow misses for ball one O'Brien will wind and fire now the 1-0 tomorrow. Comes back down the plate but missed a little high and outside. So now 2-0. O'Brien tomorrow again. Bell Vernon did not have a base runner until the bottom of the fourth inning. Couple of singles from LaCarte and 
Hamer. They couldn't get him around. O'Brien comes back on the 2-0, finds the strike zone out 2-1 to Evan Morrow. The grounded out 6-3, first time up for Bell Vernon. Going back to yesterday's game, Morrow one for two with a walk. Round ball here right back to O'Brien, who makes the throw over to first in time to the Mustang first baseman Alex McLean. And Morrow retired 1-3 for the first down to this bottom of the fifth inning. Now Jake Wessel coming to the plate. Wessel popped up to Ty Sankovic first time up. Came into the game with a 385 average and five RBIs. Was two for three yesterday. Junior catcher for Bell Vernon. O'Brien will wind and fire the first pitcher to Wessel. Breaking ball misses a little low. Down at 1-0. Now O'Brien's 1-0. Catches the inside corner for a strike, evens things up at one and one. And you look at the batter's eye out there in straightaway center field. You see the R's out there. I think he might be at Ringgold. That was for Ross Traver. You have the Leopards out there as well. Next pitch in there for a strike. Now one and two. One out, scoreless game, bottom of the fifth inning. 1-2, breaking ball, hard grounder to Sankovic at short. Throw over to first, close play, but in time to retire Jake Wessel 6-3 for the second out of this bottom of the fifth inning. And that'll bring up the sophomore right fielder, Jake Jedico. Jedico came into the game with just an 0-62 average. Sophomore, though, has produced five RBIs on the season. Again, playing right field. Going back to yesterday, Jedico was 0-3. Takes the first pitch here outside for ball one. Leopards two and five in the conference. Laurel Highlands three and two. Now Brian a little high and inside now two and zero oh to Jedico. Again, Jedico batting from the eighth position in the batting lineup. Want to throw some strikes his way, and he'll nub that one foul. Got now two and one. Zach Jackson do up behind Jedico. Two on pitch, low and inside. This is where you don't want to concede a base runner. You usually get away with throwing strikes and getting outs. Now the three one on the way, Jedico sending it foul. Now we're full of three and two. And Brian Morozak along with you. Jerry Dupay behind the camera on our Facebook Live feed. Frank Cole helping us out with the score hub. Nick Barchak and Jerome Shell back inside our WV Medicine Uniontown Hospital Studios. 3-2 pitch. Misses outside for ball four. And Bell Vernon a little life here in the bottom of the fifth. Have a base runner courtesy of Jake Jedico with Zach Jackson coming in the plate. Jackson, senior second baseman. Struck out looking first time up. Three strikeouts so far this afternoon for Braden O'Brien. Jackson, just a 100 average, has driven in, though, four runs on the season. And Jackson was not in the, actually was hit for, was the second baseman yesterday, but did not bat against the Mustangs. And here, O'Brien finds the strike zone on the first pitch to Jackson, and they count at 0 and 1. With Jedico on first, we'll see if the Leps might try to get aggressive here, sending Jedico. That one fouled off by Jackson, and just like that, two strikes on Zach Jackson. And Zach steps back in. Mustangs trying to get out of this inning with no damage being done. Throw over to first, checking the runner. Head first slide back safely there from Jedico. It's the only Section 3 4A game scheduled for today. Next pitch on the way, breaking ball, and Jackson popping this one up. Shortstop Sankovic seal, shielding the sun and able to make the catch. Not easy with that bright sunshine here in Ross Traver Township on a Saturday afternoon, but Jackson retired F6 catch from Sankovic. This game's still scoreless through five innings. We're back for the top of the six right after this here on the CR Product Group High School Sports Day. Going on now at the field of Chevy East. 
Our customers can drive away in a new 2022 Chevy Equinox for only $239 a month. Security deposit waived. Stop in for a test drive or visit SeaHarborChevyEast.com. Chevrolet, find new roads. Lease is to GMF for well-qualified individuals at 10,000 miles per year, 24 months at 3,500 tax rate equity, and must have a GM lease or non-GM lease in household. Payment is for tax title fees and for payment. Security deposit waived. Sale ends May 2nd, 2022. While supplies last, call deliver all of the details at 724-668-2231. Attorneys from all over the state and nation advertise in southwestern Pennsylvania for personal injury and workers' comp cases. But most of them send their assistants to do the legwork. You might not even meet your attorney until your first hearing. We're local attorneys, Davis and Davis. We meet directly with our clients, including free consultation. There are no fees until you receive money on your case. If you've been injured, call Davis and Davis, representing you and your neighbors yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Call 724-437-2799. UPMC Centers for Rehab Services on Wayland Smith Drive offers cutting-edge physical therapy. Jim Burns and his staff are residents of the community, treating sports injuries, neurological conditions, back pain, brains and strains, joint replacements, hand injuries, and other conditions. They treat you efficiently and safely by taking all necessary precautions while disinfecting the clinic regularly. All insurance accepted. Experienced therapists. Convenient location and hours. Part of the community. Call the office with a prescription from your doctor or schedule by direct access 724-437-7500. Back for the top of the sixth inning, still scoreless. Laurel Highlands and Bell Vernon from the DeVergilio Sports, Sports Complex here in Ross Traver Township. Mustangs with hitters 3, 4, and 5 due up here in the top of the sixth. Alex McLean, Carson D'Amico, and Braden O'Brien. Third trip through the lineup for Laurel Highlands. Alex McLean 0 for 2 today. In fact, Laurel Highlands still without a hit this afternoon. Matt Bamford. Throwing a no-hitter into the sixth inning. Mustangs, though, had plenty of base runners. Ty Sankovic walked back in the first inning. Ben Diamond hit by a pitch in the second inning. Caleb Yanoski walked in the third. C.J. Guest got on via an air. First pitch here, the first pitch swinging sent foul there from Alex McLean. In the fourth inning, Braden O'Brien got on via an air, and Ben Diamond was hit by a pitch, and Bamford retired the Mustangs 1-2-3 in that top of the fifth inning, sending down Kavanaugh, Sankovic, and Guest. 0-1 count now to Alex McLean. Bamford winds and fires. Pitch misses low and outside. Even things up at 1-1. One and, one. and McLean came in, 4-17 average. Senior first baseman, but 0-2 for two today. 1-1 one, one pitch here from Bamford. Swing and a miss. Count now 1-2. Going back to yesterday, McLean 1-2 for two with a walk and a run score. Now Bamford shaking off one sign, set to go. 1-2 to Alex McLean, fastball low and outside. Evens up the count at 2-2. Two two. Mustangs hoping to wear Bamford down a little bit. Those gold shoes, 2-2 two -two pitch swing and a miss, strike three. Another good delivery from Matt Bamford. Second time he sent down Alex McLean in this game. And overall, his fourth strikeout this afternoon. Now is mowed down 31 for the season. And Carson D'Amico, who's also 0 for 2, comes to the plate. Takes the first pitch, a fastball high and outside for ball one. Carson twice has sent it out in Adam LeCart's direction and left field. LeCart has recorded four outs in this game. In left field, doing a stellar job out there. Count now at 2-0. Bamford to D'Amico. Now Bamford's 2-0 to Carson. Comes back, just missed. Count of 3-0. Mustangs looking for any opportunity they can get in this scoreless pitcher's duel. Being no hits at this juncture of the game. And the top of the sixth inning. Bamford taking a little time there, rubbing. It's like his thumb. And a warm afternoon, especially considering the fact we haven't seen too many days like this in southwestern Pennsylvania so far this year. Next pitch on the way. That's inside for ball four. The Mustangs have their seventh base runner of the afternoon. And Carson D'Amico without a hit. So one out. Mustangs a little life here in the top of the sixth. 
D'Amico on first and Braden O'Brien coming to the plate. O'Brien got on via an air last time up as time called. And I think Bamford having some trouble with that wrist or possibly the thumb as he continues to rub it. Now head coach Tony Watson coming out. I think they're saying he might have been stung by a bee. Wow. Training staff coming out. Well, that's something you don't see every day. The whole infield coming in. And one out, scoreless game, top of the sixth inning. Mustangs with a base runner in Carson D'Amico. And this would be something if you had to make a move here and take Bamford out of the game with a no-hitter intact in the top of the sixth inning. Again, was rubbing right around the thumb area. Umpires out as well. Let's see what they decide here if Matt's going to be able to continue to go. And if it is a bee sting, sometimes you can get those to swell up pretty quickly and become irritated. He's going to try to hang in there for now. A big spot in this game. Let's see if Laurel Highlands can take advantage with Braden O'Brien at the plate again. Braden got on via an error last time up. A throwing error from Aiden Oaks. Mustangs a little activity in their bullpen as well with Alex McLean warming up. O'Brien at the plate takes the first pitch low and outside for ball one. You have to wonder if Bamford's a little off right now with that discomfort. Comes back with a fastball. Popped foul by O'Brien. Evens up the count at one and one. Great these schools are able to take advantage of this warm and dry Saturday afternoon. Haven't had too many days like this in 2022. 1-1 one, one pitch, a fastball ripped from O'Brien. Over Aiden Oaks into left field on the Mustangs. Two on with one out in this top of the sixth inning. First hit of the afternoon for Laurel Highlands. A single to left field from Braden O'Brien with one out here in the top of the sixth inning. And now let's see how long the lefts stick here with Bamford. No hitter gone. And if he's showing some discomfort out there. Now time called here by Mustang head coach Brad Yeoman down at third, talking here to Ben Diamond, who's twice been hit by a pitch in this game. Diamond also picked off back in the second inning. Came in batting just 167 with two RBIs. Again, we have two on with one out here in the top of the sixth. Talk about how nice the weather is. Actually got 18 holes of golf in before the game today. Trying to take advantage of this dry weekend in Western PA. Bamford finds the strike zone to Ben Diamond. Counted 0-1. Now Bamford glanced back at second. 0-1 pitch on the way. Misses the low. And again, Bamford, we saw that a little bit earlier, that hesitation on the follow-through after the look back to second. Count now even at 1-1. Bamford's 1-1 pitch comes back with a fastball. Gets away there from Jake Wessel. Runners advance for the Mustangs. Down to third goes Carson D'Amico. Into second. I believe that's the courtesy runner there. Joe Chambers again running for O'Brien. They count now 2-1 to Ben Diamond. Game scoreless. Mustangs looking to go ahead here in the top half of the sixth. The 2-1, Bamford to Diamond. That again hops away from Wessel, but the Mustangs with only one out here in the inning. Got to hold their station. Probably a good move there because Bamford was right on it. Of course, you go back to yesterday's game. We saw a bang-bang play at home, and we actually looked at the video on that in slow motion after the game, and it appeared Laurel Highlands caught a break on that one. 
Now the next pitch on the way to Diamond inside for ball four, and the bases are loaded here for Laurel Highlands with one out. And now it's like Bamford down again, might have hurt his ankle on that last delivery. And of course, you make another visit to the mound here for head coach Tony Watson. That has to be it for Bamford. And Coach Watson asking if he can get a courtesy visit here because of an injury. And still have the option to leave Bamford into the game. Leave Bamford in the game. They're going to allow that. So the whole infield coming in. Best opportunity for Laurel Highland so far in this game. One out top of the sixth. Bases juiced in a scoreless game. And you have Braden McKnight coming to the plate. McKnight 0 for 2 today. Struck out swinging back in the second inning. Full out to Adam LeCart. Last time up in the fourth. And a long meeting here. Surprised the blue hasn't broken it up yet. Now they're finally going to break up the little infield meeting here. McKnight came into the game just a 214 average. Did have an infield single yesterday and also picked up an RBI walk with the bases loaded in the sixth inning. Would love to do the same here today. So McKnight stepping in. He's a lefty against the righty, Matt Bamford. He actually carried a no-hitter into the sixth inning. Broken up by Braden O'Brien. Now Braden McKnight into the batter's box. D'Amico down at third, courtesy runner Chambers at second. And the first pitch, a swing and a miss from Braden McKnight. Ben Diamond over at first. Of course, you can get the force at any base right now as well if you're Bell Vernon defensively. Bamford digging in as well. 0-1 on the way. Foul tips by Braden McKnight. Count now 0-2, and, and Braden's going to have to protect the plate. These have been the type of situations where Matt Bamford has shined in over the years. Trying to get out of another jam here in the top of the sixth. 0-2 to Braden McKnight. Pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Wow. Bamford coming through in the clutch. Fifth strikeout of the afternoon for Matt Bamford. Produces the second out of this top half of the sixth. And now Caleb Yanoski at the plate. Had a walk back in the third inning. Grounded out to end the fourth. Takes the first pitch here outside for ball one. Bamford so far in this inning has endured... What we appear was to be a bee sting and also hurt his ankle. And now Yanoski setting this one foul. This will go into the Little League field and even up to count at one and one. And now must deal with the bases being loaded. Talk about things you don't see every day. So 1-1 one, one count, scoreless game, top of the six. Bases loaded for the Mustangs, two outs. Bamford's 1-1 one, one to Yanoski, and Yanoski a shot. Gets through past the outstretched glove of Zach Jackson into center, bait, into center field. Carson D'Amico scores. Joe Chambers scores, and the Mustangs have a 2-0 lead. What a clutch hit for Caleb Yanoski, and those are Yanoski's first two runs he's driven in so far this season. Two RBI single to center. Coming through in the clutch. And that will be it for Matt Bamford. Giving up the ball here with two outs in the top of the sixth. Pitching change. Mustangs up two to nothing. We're back to tell you about the new Leopards pitcher in a moment here on the CR Prada Group High School Sports Day. Mama Ruka's Pizza Shop, located at 624 Barton Mill Road in Uniontown, is your prime place to enjoy local high school sports. Mama Ruka's is family-owned and operated where pride of ownership certainly shows. The Sampson family carries on the tradition of homemade pizza, salads, subs, and wings. Mama Ruka's is open Monday through Saturday, 4 to 10, for indoor outdoor dining and takeout. Call 724-438-9066 or visit mamarukapizza.com for their menu. Bad hair day? Bad day at the office? 
bad day behind the wheel? Hey, stuff happens, even to the best of us. At least your car insurance rate doesn't have to take a hit. Get Erie Rate Lock from Erie Insurance. Gives you a great rate that stays put until you change a car, driver, or your address. Plus, seriously good service. Now that's something to smile about. Your Erie agent in Uniontown and Ross Traver Township is Sproul's Insurance Group. 724-437-9812 or go to SprawlsInsurance.com. Erie Rate Lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage and is not available in all states. Back here in Ross Traver Township, Parker Lind, the new Bell Vernon pitcher. And for Lind, he enters the game a 1-2 and two record. This is his fourth appearance of the season. Lefty with a 3.94 ERA. Lind has worked 10 and two-thirds innings, given up seven hits, seven runs. Six of them earned, struck out 16 and walked six. So far this season, facing 52 opposing batters. So Lind certainly gives the Mustangs a different look. And he had to credit Matt Bamford, pitched a heck of a game for Bell Vernon this afternoon, took a no-hitter into the sixth inning, but after striking out Alex McClain, Carson D'Amico walking, Braden O'Brien breaking up Bamford's no-hitter with a single to left field, Ben Diamond walking. Bamford came back with a bases-loaded strikeout of Braden McKnight, but Caleb Janoski's Two RBI single, the knockout punch as far as getting Bamford out of the game. And again, Bamford also had an issue with his thumb. Might have been stung by a B and then had an ankle injury. Also in this top of the sixth inning. So talk about a long inning. Not over yet. Mustangs two across. And now have runners on the corners at first and third. Yanoski at first. Diamond down at third. And Patrick Cavanaugh at the plates. Patrick 0 for 2 today but came into the game with a 429 average as Laurel Highlands completing their third trip through the batting lineup. A lefty Lind. First pitch and therefore a strike to Kavanaugh, counted 0-1. Again, Bell Vernon still six outs left to work with in this game. All the top of the order and Brody Hoffman due up. Check that Brady Hoffman due up to start the sixth inning. Now the Sun finally for the first time in quite a while behind the clouds. Here on Ross Traver Township as Kavanaugh talks to head coach Brad Yeoman down the third base line. And Laurel Highland started off this season losing two games to West Mifflin. They've won five straight since trying to make it six in a row this afternoon. 0-1 pitch, swing and a miss there from Patrick. Takes the count to 0-2. Patrick's done a nice job to solidify the starting catching position for Laurel Highlands this season as well. Choking up on the bat, 0-2 pitch on the way, swing and a miss, strike three. So the freshman Parker Lind coming into the game, striking out Patrick Cavanaugh to end the inning, but the damage already done, too. Coming across for Laurel Highlands here in the top half of the sixth. We'll go to the bottom of the sixth. Laurel Highlands leading Bell Vernon 2 to nothing here on the CR Product Group High School Sports Day. Spring forward to home construction season with First Federal of Greene County. First Federal's construction and improvement loans puts you in charge of your dream home project. With all the tools you need, First Federal offers construction loans, owner-builder loans, and home improvement loans. With offices in Fayette, Greene, and Washington counties, your loan stays here. Visit with a First Federal loan officer today or apply online at firstfederalofgreene.com. First Federal Savings and Loan Association of Greene County. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender, and MLS number 458-729. Go to 40 Uniontown and trade me in. John Clinton from 40 Uniontown. Now I've heard that April showers bring May flowers, but how about new vehicles? Well, I guess that's just wishful thinking. So don't get left out in the storm. Stop, click, or call our friendly staff and let us explain our reservation program. First, we go over, in detail, vehicles that we have inbound. Then we go over all the incentives and pricing. If you have a trade, we do an on-the-spot trade appraisal. We make a deal, and when your vehicle arrives, pick it up. It's easy like Sunday morning. If you have a bit more time, we're happy to place a factory order just for you. And I know you've all heard about historic used vehicle values, so don't miss out. And speaking of used vehicles, we have more than 80 on the lot, and most are certified with factory warranty. That's President Award winning 40 Uniontown. Top of the hill across the Maplebees or 40uniontown.com. Pressure back on Bell Vernon heading to the bottom of the sixth inning. Leps trailing now 2 to nothing after Laurel Highlands put up two runs in the top half of the sixth inning. They do have the top of the order. Brady Hoffman, Adam LeCart, and Andrew Sokol do up. Hoffman 0 for 2 came in with a 323 average. First pitch from O'Brien. Missing there to Hoffman. 
Count it. 1-0. Oh. O'Brien got the start here for the Mustangs today. There's Hoffman. Hard ground ball. Scott knocking it down, trying to make the throw in time. What a job there from Carson Scott at second base. Hard ground ball, knocked it down, able to regain, send it off to Alex McLean in time to retire Hoffman 4-3. Now one out here in the bottom of the sixth with Adam LeCart coming to the plate. LeCart one for two today, single to center field and stole a base last time up. First pitch from O'Brien to LeCart, breaking ball, just missed for ball one. They missed by too much. Now O'Brien's 1-0 here to LeCart. Another breaking ball, ground ball to Sankovic, at short. Throw over to first in time to Alex McLean to retire LeCart 6-3. So two up, two down here in the home half of the sixth. Now Andrew Sokol coming to the plate. Andrew 0 for 2 today. Senior first baseman came in with a 296 average and 5 RBIs. Got the start on the mound for Bell Vernon yesterday against Laurel Highlands. Sokol was 0 for 3 at the plate yesterday as well. Just the third time through the order for the Leps. O'Brien's first pitch to Sokol. Low and outside for ball one. And again, the Mustangs in the stretch of four games over five days. Gotten five and two-thirds out of Braden O'Brien so far. Have to be happy with that. Another one missing there from Braden. Now 2-0 to Andrew Sokol. O'Brien's gotten the ERA down a little bit in this game as well. Came in at 5.25. Hasn't yielded a run yet so far in this contest. 2-0 on the way. Misses low and inside. So after retiring Hoffman and Lacard on a couple of ground ball outs, runs the count now to 3-0 to Andrew Sokol. Ryan Hamer from the cleanup spot due up next. 3-0 pitch on the way, and that one missed for ball four. Close again, so a two-out walk issued by O'Brien to Sokol. And a little life for Bell Vernon with a game-tying run coming to the plate, and Ryan Hamer. Hamer one for two today. Single to right center field last time up, grounded out first time up back in the second inning. O'Brien now from the stretch. First pitch to Hamer, swing and a miss, strike one. There's two hits for Bell Vernon so far in this game. Mustangs two hits as well, but have two runs to go along with it. 0-1 now on the way, another breaking ball, just missed inside. Count even at 1-1. One one. O'Brien a little glance over his shoulder at Sokol at first, now we'll check him. Andrew back safely. Brian, another glance over at first base. 1-1 one, one pitch on the way high, takes us to 2-1. and one. Now the 2-1. Fastball misses low, now 3-1. and O'Brien to Hamer. And he got the first two outs rather easily in this inning. You don't want to yield back-to-back -back watch and have to think if Hamer gets a board here, you might see the Mustangs make a move to the bullpen as well. Now a little conversation here between Patrick Cavanaugh and Braden O'Brien. Let you know that this game on the South Union Township Sports Network brought to you by the Sprouse Insurance Group in Uniontown and Agent David Hughes. United Bank, Davis and Davis Attorneys at Law. South Union Township Supervisors Robert Schiffbauer, Rick Vernon, and Jason Scott. Southwestern Gastrointestinal Specialist, SWGI, in Uniontown, Dr. Calabrese, Ruth Hart, Stokes, and Hoppy. And Zebley Mahalo and White, Uniontown Business and Bankruptcy Attorneys. Our live video stream on WMBS, courtesy of Potter's Bar and Grill and MR Transit. So big pitch here, three and one. Now Hamer showing bunt, pulls back, pitch misses for ball four, and you've had back-to-back -back walks issue now by Braden O'Brien, Andrew Sokol, and Ryan Hamer. And a little life now for the Leps. Game tying run at first, go-ahead run coming to the plate, and Brad Yeoman now will have a little talk here, and we'll see if Brad makes a move to the Mustang bullpen. Hull infield coming in. At this juncture of the game, Mustangs lead it two to nothing. Again, producing their only two runs in the top half of this inning on a two RBI hit from Caleb Yanoski. 
That drove in Carson D'Amico and Joe Chambers, the courtesy runner for Braden O'Brien. Now the umpires coming out to break out, break up the little meeting on the mound. Let's see if they stick with Braden O'Brien here. Looks like they will. And you'll have Aiden Oaks coming to the plate for Bell Vernon. Oaks 0 for 2 today, but a 276 average for the season with six RBIs. Bell Vernon shortstop. Oaks yesterday was one for three. Oaks now stepping in. Mustangs lost a 5-4 game here last year to Bell Vernon under the lights. First pitch swinging popped up in foul territory from Oaks. Over the fence and out of play. Counted 0-1. I think you will see the Mustangs make a move to the pen for the seventh, even if Oaks is retired. No one to Oaks. This ball popped up, could be trouble, charging from center and working off to his left to make the catch. C.J. Guest to end the inning. So the left strand two off of a couple of walks issued by Braden O'Brien. Mustangs get out of the jam. Way to the top of the seventh. Laurel Highlands looking for a couple of insurance runs, leading Bell Vernon two to nothing here on the CR Product Group High School Sports Day. Just as your local State Farm agent combines good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates, you can combine your home and auto. And guess what you'll get? That's right, good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates. In fact, State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman is your go-to agent in Uniontown for the service you deserve at the price you want. So try to combine home and auto today. State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman will help you mix and match things perfectly. Call 724-592-6308 for your surprisingly great rate. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Going on now is the other Chevrolet. Our customers can drive away in a new 2022 Chevy Equinox for only $239 a month. Security deposit waived. Stop in for a test drive or visit SeaHarborChevy.com. Chevrolet, find new roads. Lease is the GMF for well-qualified individuals at 10,000 miles per year. 24 months with 3,500 cash rate equity. and must have a GM lease or non-GM lease in household. Payment is for tax, title fees, and for payment. Security deposit waived. Sale ends May 2nd, 2022. While supplies last, call dealer for all of the details at 724-929-8000. Bring forward to home construction season with First Federal of Greene County. First Federal's construction and improvement loans puts you in charge of your dream home project with all the tools you need. First Federal offers construction loans, owner-builder loans, and home improvement loans. With offices in Fayette, Greene, and Washington counties, your loan stays here. Visit with a First Federal loan officer today or apply online at firstfederalofgreene.com. First Federal Savings and Loan Association of Greene County. Member FDIC, equal housing lender, NMLS number 458729. Mustang starting this top half of the seventh inning from the leadoff spot. Ty Sankovich taking the first pitch inside for ball one. Hitters one, two, and three for Laurel Highlands facing the freshman Parker Lind who came on in relief of Matt Bamford who took a no-hitter into the sixth inning then yielded two runs and going the opposite way left for a hit. Ty Sankovich single to left field. That must feel good for Ty who struggled a little bit at the plate over the last couple of games for Laurel Highlands. Getting on base as the Mustangs look for a little insurance here in the top half of the seventh. Now C.J. Guest coming to the plate. Laurel Highlands moving through the order now for the fourth time in this game. C.J. grounded out first time up. Got on via an air in the third inning and flew out to Jake Jettico in right field back in the fifth. Nobody out. Lind versus Guest. Mustangs up two to nothing. And Lind the lefty clean look over at first. Guest showing bunt. Pitch in there, actually called strike, would have been outside, but C.J. didn't pull back. A count 0-1. For Bell Vernon in the bottom half of the seventh inning, they'll have hitters 6, 7, and 8 due up. Morrow, Wessel, and Jettico. 0-1, a little high, evens up the count at 1-1. One one. Been another pitcher's duel this afternoon between, it started with Bamford and O'Brien. Now Lynn versus O'Brien. Yesterday, Joe Chambers able to best Andrew Sokol. Pitch missed. They called for an appeal. Didn't get it. Count now two and one. Lind to Gesk. And CJ entered the game with a 385 average. 
Mustangs just three hits so far this afternoon, two in the sixth, now one here in the seventh. Guess showing bunt, try to pull back, and they're going to say he did pull back. The count now three and one. Alex McLean in the on deck circle for the Stangs. Now Lynn's 3-1 here to CJ, and CJ puts it on the ground, charging from short, tough play, Aiden Oaks, and Aiden Oaks with no play. Just a well-positioned ball there from CJ Gask. I have to give him an infield single. And now two on with nobody out for Laurel Highlands. They look to extend their 2-0 lead. Well, Pirates baseball up next on the WMBS side, taking on the Cubs this afternoon. 2.20, first pitch from Wrigley today. Alex McLean now at the plate. He's 0 for 3 today. Struck out in his last two plate appearances. Shows Bunn again, pulls back. Pitch misses low for ball one. Parker Lynn taking his time. Again, showing bunt, pulling back. Pitch misses inside again from Lind. A 2-0 count now on Alex McLean. Oh, Alex. Alex back in the batter's box. Scoring away, pulling back. That pitch in there for a strike. Count now 2-1. Wins 2-1 again, showing Bunt laying it down this time, charging from first off the glove of Andrew Sokol, and no play. No play again for Bell Vernon in the field. I think you have to give that an E3 on Sokol. Had it on his glove, couldn't make the play. So everybody's safe. Bases now loaded for Laurel Highlands. Cleanup hitter Carson D'Amico coming to the plate. Mustangs lead it two to nothing. Looking for insurance as we work here in the top half of the seventh inning. Carson now steps in. Lynn winds and fires the first pitch. Sent foul there from Carson. Carson walked and scored a run last time up. And came in with a 455 average and seven RBIs. One for two yesterday with an RBI double and a run scored. It's a line drive over the glove of Zach Jackson, who was playing in from second base. If Jackson was in his normal position, would have been able to make that grab, you would think. So it's an RBI single to right from Carson D'Amico. Drives in Tyler Sankovich. The lead now at 3 to nothing for Laurel Highlands. Still nobody out here in the top of the seventh. And Tony Watson now will pay a visit to talk to his freshman pitcher, Parker Lind. And you wonder if another move might be made here for the Leopards. They have some activity occurring in their bullpen down the third baseline. Three straight, check that, four straight Mustangs have reached base safely. Here in this top of the seventh inning. Coach Watson still talking with Parker Lind. Now the umpire's coming out. As our studio producer, Nick Barczyk, would say, come on, Blue, out there. If you've ever gone to a pirate game with Nick, you know the experience. Now they'll break it up. And Parker Lynn will remain on the mound. He'll have Braden O'Brien coming to the plate. He broke up the Matt Bamford no-hitter in the top of the sixth inning. Has the table set here with the bases loaded. First pitch from Lynn to O'Brien misses. Actually catches the outside corner for a strike. Late call there from the home plate umpire. Counted 0-1. So Braden digging back in. Lefty on the mound, righty at the plate. That one sent foul from O'Brien. Count now 0-2.
Parker Lynn now set again. Leopard's just looking for an out. Infield still in with the Mustangs now leading a three to nothing. Two strike pitch on the way, a little inside. They're gonna call a called strike three. They're gonna say that O'Brien did offer on the pitch. So they'll go as a forward K for Parker Lind. The pitch definitely jammed O'Brien, but didn't go around enough to warrant the strikeout. Now Ben Diamond at the plates. Takes the first pitch outside for ball one. Diamond twice in this game has been hit by a pitch and also walked back in the sixth innings. He's been on board in every plate appearance. Just not in the conventional manner. 1-0 pitch on the way. Misses low and outside. Count now 2-0. Of course, nowhere to put Diamond at this juncture of the game with the bases loaded. Had an RBI walk issued yesterday. And these two teams met at Hutchinson Field and Hopwood. Leopards trying to avoid that happening here again today. 2-0 on the way. Again off the plate. Now a 3-0 count. Lynn to Diamond. Diamond would love an RBI walk. I think he's taken here. Leopards need a strike here from Lind, and they get it. Count moves to three and one. Now Lind looking for the signs from catcher Jake Wessel. 3-1 here to Ben Diamond. Catches the inside corner for another strike. Diamond thought it was ball four. So Lynn doing a nice job to battle his way back. Coming off the strikeout of O'Brien trying to send down Ben Diamond. Count full of three and two. Now time called by Ben Diamond. Now Ben will step back in. 3-2 pitch. Diamond staying alive, late cut there, be able to get a piece of it and foul it off on the right side. Now the payoff pitch again, Linda Diamond, and Diamond, again, another foul ball staying alive on the right side. That one was dipping late from Lynn, might have been ball four. We have to protect the plate now at the count of three and two. Here we go again, Lynn to Diamond. Diamond the sixth Mustang to bat here in this top of the seventh. Pitch from Parker, hits Penn Diamond for the third time in this game. Penn Diamond is hit by a pitch. This time he picks up an RBI. Wow. Takes the score to four to nothing, and now we're going to have a move made here by head coach Tony Watson. He's going to take Parker Lind out of the game. And we'll take another timeout. Now four to nothing, Laurel Highlands over Bell Vernon. We're back right after this. Tell you about the new Bell Vernon pitcher here on the CR Prada Group High School Sports Day. I'm attorney Rob Harper, and I'm happy to be joining Bill Martin and Trip Radcliffe at Radcliffe Law in Uniontown. I grew up in Uniontown and chose to make Fayette County my home. I also represent the county as an assistant district attorney, and I know my way around a courtroom. If you are hurt in an accident, buying or selling a home, need assistance with an estate or will preparation, call me at Radcliffe Law, 724-439-3939. The initial consultation is free. Radcliffe Law, making the law personal. General Dentist Dr. Edward L. Wetech Jr. treats children, teens, and adults of all ages. Dr. Wetech performs all phases of general dentistry, including crowns and bridges, partials, full dentures, comprehensive orthodontics, root canals, bonded white fillings, dental implants to replace missing teeth and to stabilize loose-fitting dentures, and comprehensive exams and cleaning. Dr. Wetech's office is located on the National Pike, one mile west of the mall on Route 40. Call him up at 724-439-1616 for Dr. Edward L. Wetech, Jr. The Catholic War Veterans Post 1669 in Hopwood, holding a veterans breakfast Sunday, May 20th. 22nd from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. The breakfast includes pancakes, sausage, bacon, eggs, coffee, tea, orange juice, and milk. Veterans, fire, and police are free. Guests are welcome and asked to make a goodwill donation. The Veterans Breakfast, Sunday, May 22nd from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Catholic War Veterans Post 1669 in Hopwood. RSVP not required. 
Back here in Ross Draver Township at DeVergilio Sports Complex. Bell Vernon going to their third pitcher of the afternoon in Colton Lee. For Lee, already his seventh appearance, enters with an 0-1 record. 7.56 ERAs, worked eight and one-third innings, all in relief. Given up 14 hits, 10 runs, nine of them earned. Struck out eight and walked five so far this season, facing 47 opposing batters. So Laurel Highlands now up four to nothing. They tacked on two runs in the top of the sixth, added two more here in the top of the seventh. We're working here with one out in the top of the seventh inning. Matt Bamford took a no-hitter into the top of the sixth. Braden O'Brien broke that up. And then you had an odd inning where Bamford was stung by a B and then hurt his ankle, and the B might end up being the MVP of the game for Laurel Highlands. Credit Frank Kula for that. <laughs> and now we'll get a look at Colton Lee on the mound for the Lips. They'll face Braden McKnight. It will be the seventh Mustang to bat here in this top of the seventh. Mustangs looking for their sixth straight win. And would really have the Leps in a tough spot. It would drop Bell Vernon with a loss here to two and six in conference play with only four conference games remaining. And the remaining two conference series against Elizabeth Ford and Greensburg-Salem. So the best they could get would be to six and six in the conference which still would probably be enough for the fourth and final playoff spot in the conference, but don't really have much wiggle room at this juncture of the season if you're Bell Vernon. First pitch from Lee misses to Braden McKnight. Now Lee's 1-0. McKnight sending it foul. Evens up the count at 1-1. One one. You go back to last year, West Mifflin won the conference with an 11-1 overall record. Their own conference loss game against Laurel Highlands. Mustangs finished at 9-3. They lost conference games here to Bell Vernon at Greensburg, Salem, and also to West Mifflin. Bell Vernon finished last year 6-6. Six six. That was good enough for third place in the conference. This one nub foul. Michael Cavanaugh able to make the play over there on the right side in foul territory. Now 1-2 to Braden McKnight. And Elizabeth Ford picked up the final playoff spot at 5-7. and seven. Ringgold, Greensburg, Salem, and Uniontown all missed out last year, but we're all in contention going into the final week. Ringgold and Salem finished at 4-8, and eight, Uniontown at 3-9. and nine. But what a turnaround it's been for Kenny Musco's squad. We'll see Uniontown and West Mifflin on WMBS Monday. Top two teams right now in the conference, Red Raiders at 4-2. and two. In fact, with a win today, Laurel Highlands would pull even with Uniontown. And with tie the Red Raiders for second place in the conference, those two schools will meet in the final conference series of the year, second week in May. Now Braden McKnight stepping back in. It's a one, two count to McKnight. With Colton Lee on the mound. And the base is loaded. And that pitch, a called strike three on the inside corner. Well placed there by Lee. So Lee coming on in relief, retiring McKnight. That'll bring up Caleb Yanoski, and Yanoski's the Mustang who broke this game open in a scoreless game, two RBI, single to left. The Mustangs have attacked a few more on, now lead it four to nothing. First pitch here, lead to Yanoski. First pitch swinging, sent foul. Counted 0-1. So the Leopards will have plenty of ground to make up in the bottom half of the seventh inning with Evan Morrow, Jake Wessel, and Jake Jedico due up. Hitters 6, 7, and 8. Yanoski, the eighth Mustang to bat here in this half inning. 0-1 pitch. Catches the corner for a strike, 0-2. Home plate umpire giving a lot of those close calls. Called strikes now at this juncture of the game. Now the 0-2. Yanoski will have to protect the plate. And the base is still loaded. 0-2 pitch on the way. Yanoski fouls it off on the left side. Count remains 0-2. Let's go, Caleb. Come on. Base hit. Also going to be interesting to see if it's Braden O'Brien on the mound or if the Mustangs make a move to the bullpen for the bottom half of the seventh inning. Now the two-strike pitch on Caleb Yanoski. 
It's on the way, and Yanoski sending it high in the air to right field, backing up Jake Jedico, able to make the catch to end the inning. So the Mustangs leave the bases loaded, but add two more runs to their tally. It's 4 to nothing. Laurel Highlands over Bell Vernon. Last chance to dance today for the Leopards, going to the bottom of the seventh inning down to their final three outs here on the CR Product Group High School Sports Day. UPMC Centers for Rehab Services on Wayland Smith Drive offers cutting-edge physical therapy. Jim Burns and his staff are residents of the community, treating sports injuries, neurological conditions, back pain, brains and strains, joint replacements, hand injuries, and other conditions. They treat you efficiently and safely by taking all necessary precautions while disinfecting the clinic regularly. All insurance accepted. Experienced therapists. Convenient location and hours. Part of the community. Call the office with a prescription from your doctor or schedule by direct access 724-437-7500. Bad hair day? Bad day at the office? Bad day behind the wheel? Hey, stuff happens, even to the best of us. At least your car insurance rate doesn't have to take a hit. Get Erie Rate Lock from Erie Insurance. Gives you a great rate that stays put until you change a car, driver, or your address. Plus, seriously good service. Now that's something to smile about. Your Erie agent in Uniontown and Ross Traver Township is Sprowls Insurance Group. 724-437-9812 or go to SprowlsInsurance.com. Erie Rate Lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage and is not available in all states. Going on now is the other Chevrolet. Our customers can drive away in a new 2022 Chevy Equinox for only $239 a month. Security deposit waived. Stop in for a test drive or visit SeaHarborChevy.com. Chevrolet, find new roads. Lease is the GMF for well-qualified individuals at 10,000 miles per year. 24 months with 3,500 tax rate equity and must have a GM lease or non-GM lease in household. Payment is for tax penalties and percent. Payment, security deposit waived. Sale ends May 2nd, 2022. Walk slide last. Call dealer for all of the details at 724-929-8000. The Mustangs will start this bottom of the seventh inning with Braden O'Brien on the mound, who misses on the first pitch high and inside on a fastball to Evan Morrow. Now O'Brien's 1-0 to Evan. Another fastball catches the outside corner for a strike to even up the count at 1-1. Again, Laurel Highlands leads 4-0 over Bell Vernon. Mustangs playing two runs in the top of the sixth, adding two more on in the top of the seventh inning. 1-1. One, one. Breaking ball misses low and outside. Takes the count to 2-1. Reminder to stay tuned after the game for our post-game show brought to you by State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman. And he followed by the Pirates and Cubs on the WMBS side. Another one missing low there from O'Brien to Evan Morrow. Takes the count to 3-1. So Mustang head coach Brad Yeoman at least giving O'Brien an opportunity here to get a complete game like Joe Chambers got yesterday for the Mustangs. 3-1 on the way, and that one sent foul, and will go 4-3-2. and O'Brien tomorrow. Mustangs hoping to have Devin Kravoski available next week. Devin and Frank Kula both out with stomach bugs today. Frankie also missed yesterday's game. Carson Scott has made his first two varsity starts at second base. His 3-2 pitch hit high in the air, and the gap to left center field back to the wall. And this one goes off the wall for Morrow. And Morrow with a stand-up double for Bell Vernon, giving the Leps a little life here in the bottom of the seventh inning. But Bell Vernon still trailing four to nothing. And you'll have Jake Wessel now, the catcher, coming to the plate. I think that's going to be it for Braden O'Brien as Brad Yeoman comes out. He gave Braden an opportunity for a complete game, but Morrow's double is going to get Braden out for the Mustangs this afternoon. So we'll be back and tell you about the new Laurel Highlands pitcher. Mustangs still up 4 to nothing as we work at the bottom of the seventh. Leopards down to their final three outs here in the CR Product Group High School Sports Day. The WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital Orthopedic and Spine Institute is open, and their experienced providers are ready to care for you. Orthopedic and Spine Care spans a wide range of problems, from arthritis to joint trauma caused by injury or overuse. Hips, shoulders, knees, and backs are the most common areas where patients experience pain or impaired function. At WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital, they can treat orthopedic and spine problems with state-of-the-art care. Their board-certified orthopedic surgeons and specialists are well-experienced in the latest treatments for damaged and diseased joints. They offer everything from physical therapies to joint repairs and joint replacements. Whenever possible, the newest minimally invasive techniques are used to ensure quicker recovery, less pain, and less damage to surrounding tissues. To learn more about the newly opened Orthopedic and Spine Institute at WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital or to schedule an appointment, call 724-912-7533 or visit wvumedicine.org slash uniontown. WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital, the new us, here for you. 
<laughs> Dinner's great. It's one of your top three favorite meals. You just don't want to have to make it. Well, with Jimmy John's, you don't have to. Whether you live in a sandwich delivery zone or head into the store, you can always get a freaky fresh sandwich. Click to order at jimmyjohns.com. Freaky fast, freaky good. Order online at jimmyjohns.com or call 724-437-6800 for delivery or curbside pickup. Jimmy John's, next to Walnut Hill, shop and save. Alex McLean is the new Mustang pitcher. Pretty simple switch for Laurel Highlands. McLean, he was playing first, now pitching. And Braden O'Brien, who was pitching, now playing first base. For McLean, just his second appearance of the season, 0-1 record, 9.33 ERA. has worked three innings, given up four hits, four runs, all of them earned, struck out four, walked one, facing 15 opposing batters on the season. So the Leopards... Now the runner in scoring position, and Evan Morrow at second base. Jake Wessel at the plate. Mustangs lead it four to nothing. Last opportunity for Bell Vernon here this afternoon, trying to avoid the weekend sweep. Wessel 0 for 2 today after going 2 for 3 yesterday. Now McLean's first pitch here to Wessel. Inside for ball one. Up four runs at this juncture of the game. You just want to see some strikes from Alex McLean. Still have a little comfort zone. 1-0 pitch. Catches the corner. Evens up the count at 1-1. One one. Now Wessel steps back in. McLean's 1-1, fastball popped up in foul territory on the right side. Mustangs won't have a play on it. Take the count to 1-2. and two. Wessel came into the game with a 385 average and five RBIs. Let's go, Alex. The Pirates and Cubs coming your way next. Arnie Amber in tonight on WMBS from 6-9. One two pitch, fastball grounded here to Sankovic. It's short. Throw over to first to O'Brien in time to retire Wessel 6 3. The runner Morrow advances down to third. And now one out here in the bottom half of the seventh inning with Jake Jedico coming to the plate. Jedico walked last time up, grounded out 4 3 first time up. Trying to get his season going at the plates. Again, really the runner, Morrow, a third meaningless at this juncture of the game with a score of four to nothing. This one strikes and outs. McLean gets a strike right down the pipe there to Jedica. Count at 0-1. Wessel one now the 0-1, another fastball, catches the outside corner for strike two. Now Jedico must protect the plate. McLean ready again. Clean look over a third, 0-2 pitch, breaking ball. Did Jedico go? No, he didn't. Count at one and two. Count now one and two. McLean to Jedico. One-two pitch on the way, another fastball. This one nubbed right back to McLean. Throw over to O'Brien a little wide, but makes the tag. Run does score on the play. So it goes 1-3. Jedico picks up his sixth RBI of the season. Run scored for Evan Morrow. And the score now at 4-1, but the base is empty, and Bell Vernon down to their final out with Zach Jackson at the plate. Jackson 0-2 today. And right now for McLean, just wind and fire. He'll do that. Fastball, though, just missed a little low and outside. Count 1-0. Oh. Jackson entered with just a 100 average. Another fastball. Jackson fouls it off on the right side. Evens up the count at 1-1. One and, one. and we're back. More high school baseball Monday and Tuesday next week. As of now, scheduled to have West Mifflin at Uniontown Monday. Greensburg Salem at Laurel Highlands Tuesday. With the way the weather is, you never know. 1-1 one, one pitch on the way. Jackson sends it foul on the left side. Now the Mustangs just a strike away from closing this one out. Hey, Alex, one more. Hey, one 
up four to one. We were scoreless going into the top of the sixth. Mustangs played it two runs there, added two more in the top of the seventh. Lep's getting a run back here in the bottom half of the inning. Matt Bamford took a no-hitter for Bell Vernon into that sixth inning. Now the one-two pitch. McLean trying to close it out on the way and staying alive. Jackson again off the fence with a foul ball. Count remains one and two. They're out of balls. They're going to get one. From the Bell Vernon dugout. Trying to find one that Alex McLean likes right now. Here we go again. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Mustangs up four to one, trying to close it out in the bottom of the seventh. McLean's one, two on the way, swing and a miss, strike three, and that will do it. Laurel Highlands, the weekend sweep over Bell Vernon. Sixth straight win for the Mustangs. They improved to six and two overall, four and two in the conference. Loss drops Bell Vernon to three and seven overall, two and six in conference play. We're back to tell you all about it on our postgame show brought to you by State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman comes your way next. Did you know that you have a choice for your physical therapy provider? NovaCare Rehabilitation offers same-day appointments, and oftentimes you don't need a prescription from your doctor to see us. We will make sure that you are treated as an individual and will work directly one-on-one -on -one with you to help achieve your goals. You have tried the rest. Now try the best. NovaCare, Delaware Avenue in Uniontown. Phone 724-437-0556 to schedule your appointment today. Going on now, it's the other Chevrolet. Our customers can drive away in a new 2022 Chevy Equinox for only $239 a month. Security deposit waived. Stop in for a test drive or visit SeaHarborChevy.com. Chevrolet, find new roads. Lease is the GMS for well-qualified individuals at 10,000 miles per year. 24 months with 3,500 cash rate equity and must have a GM lease for non-GM lease in household. Payment is for tax, penalties, and for payment. Security deposit waived. Sale ends May 2nd, 2022. While supplies last, call dealer for all of the details at 724-929-8000. I'm attorney Rob Harper, and I'm happy to be joining Bill Martin and Trip Radcliffe at Radcliffe Law in Uniontown. I grew up in Uniontown and chose to make Fayette County my home. I also represent the county as an assistant district attorney, and I know my way around a courtroom. If you are hurt in an accident, buying or selling a home, need assistance with an estate or will preparation, call me at Radcliffe Law, 724-439-3939. The initial consultation is free. Radcliffe Law, making the law personal. The Catholic War Veterans Post 1669 in Hopwood, holding a veterans breakfast Sunday, May 22nd, from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. The breakfast includes pancakes, sausage, bacon, eggs, coffee, tea, orange juice, and milk. Veterans, fire, and police are free. Guests are welcome and asked to make a goodwill donation. The Veterans Breakfast, Sunday, May 22nd, from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Catholic War Veterans Post 1669 in Hopwood. RSVP not required. Back here wrapping things up from the DeVirgilio Sports Complex in Ross Traver Township. Our postgame show brought to you by State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman, your winning pitcher. Braden O'Brien for Laurel Highlands as the Mustangs win it 4-1. to one. Matt Bamford had a no-hitter going into the sixth inning, but he'll pick up the loss here today and go to 2-2 two and two on the year. O'Brien goes to 2-1 and one with the win. Alex McLean coming in in relief in the seventh inning, picking up the save. And again, we mentioned Matt Bamford, a no-hitter going into that Top half of the sixth inning for Bell Vernon, broken up by Braden O'Brien with a single to left field, but you had Bamford having to endure a bee sting and also injured his ankle in that inning. A two RBI single from Caleb Yanoski drove in Carson D'Amico and Joe Chambers, who was the courtesy runner for O'Brien, and that kind of opened up things for Laurel Highlands. Mustangs tacked on two more runs off of relief pitcher Parker Lind in the seventh inning. Tyler Sankovic and C.J. Guest scoring those runs for Laurel Highlands. Bell Vernon added a run in the bottom half of the seventh inning to make your final score at 4-1. to one. On the South Union Township Sports Network, I'd like to thank the Sprouse Insurance Group in Uniontown and Agent David Hughes, United Bank, Davis and Davis Attorneys at Law. South Union Township Supervisors Robert Schiffbauer, Rick Vernon and Jason Scott, SWGI in Uniontown and Zebley Mahalov and White, Uniontown Business and Bankruptcy Attorneys on the WMBS side, Potter's Bar and Grill and MNR Transit for sponsoring our video feed. On the South Union Township Sports Network, this game was brought to you as a joint cooperative venture featuring Township Supervisors Bob Schiffbauer, Rick Vernon and Jason Scott, Breezeline Cable, Armstrong Cable, and our friends at CUTV, including Gary Smith and his staff. 
Again, I'm Brian Morozak with Jerry Dupay, Nick Barczyk, back inside our WVU Medicine Union Town Hospital studios, along with Jerome Shell, Frank Kula, keeping stats for us this afternoon as well. Laurel Highlands, a 4-1 to one win over Bell Vernon. Again, more high school baseball coming your way next week on Monday and Tuesday. Again, I have to thank the staff here at the Ross Straver Township Complex, the DeVergilio Sports Complex for setting us up in the Belvern and Athletic Department as well. Laurel Highlands picking up their sixth straight win, 4-1 to one, over Belvern this afternoon. For everyone who